Invincible.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our very first Season 8 Lumia Marathon finish. Good old North America here. I am, of course, Circadia, joined today by my man himself, Shuvi Senpai. Shuvi, welcome back to North America. We've been road tripping in Korea for a while, but we are back here in our home. How are you feeling, brother? Feeling pretty good, man. I mean, we've had so much eternal return during season eight, and we are back yeah. this time around with the season finals. I have been waiting for this ever since we ever got announced yeah. to both you and I, because we know a little bit longer than most of the players did for the most part. But ever since we got the news that this was going to be happening in North America, EU, and SA, I've been waiting for this day, and it is finally here. Yeah, it has been a long time coming. We hope you guys are excited for it today as well, but we have a a lot to go over, Shuvi, and I think today we're going to be starting out with talking about our scoring system and, of course, just our general event overview. If you guys do not know, it is a five-round format today for squads with the total prize pool being a whopping 1200 dollars coming home to all of our lovely participants with of course our point system down there at the bottom it is going to be 32 for first second uh we'll get 16 points so on and so forth with four points for kills and of course four uh negative four points for death from anything that is not another player and i am just looking so forward to today and you know speaking of today shuby we have to introduce our players as well would you like to take us through who we're going to be seeing on lumia island today Oh yeah, these people have been working so hard throughout the past couple of months here to get to the season finals here today. Guys, all of you guys in the chat, give it up for Team No Flame, played by Superior, Frankie Doodle, and Anot. Team Oozing E-Girls, represented by Lily Petal, Nico Nico Sushi, and Uzma. Team Riz, represented by Passant, Esther, and Meek Speedy. Haya Papaya, represented here by Calstick, Mactel, and Triss. Ikuyo, please, with Sakamata, Desu de Kido, as well as Drowning Kittens, and Gap Storm as our last team rounding out our six teams here tonight with Deus, Misroy, as well as Galazor, an incredible lineup that we have here today, an incredible season that these play people have played so far. All they have to do is just five more games that they have to work on. Yeah, it has been so long now that we've watched these players come in to do their thing. I've been looking forward to it for so long. I know me and you both have. We've been casting tournaments. We've been watching them. We've been going over them. We've been doing so much going into this and we are already into our picks for this lobby shuvi it's looking like we're seeing a lot of what we kind of expected from these players of course if you guys don't know these are just some of their best characters of course look at no flame picking their usual sua sylvia and of course fiora from a not and just shuvi what else is kind of is anything really standing out to you in this lobby right now or you know what what do you got your eye on Nothing at all. I mean, the only thing right now that I personally have my eyes on is the fact that we have two IRMs actually coming through. One is going to be on Niko Niko Sushi, and the other is going to be on Dezu. This character has gotten a lot of changes in recent times, and in my opinion, very solid character when it comes to team mode. She has a lot of damage, a lot of sustain for herself as well. We can see Sentinel being built on both of our IRMs here. 100% makes sense. You want to be that frontline crowd-controlling source and allowing your teammates to do all the damage. So those two IRMs are going to be the ones that I'm going to be looking at the most here. But other than that, I mean, this is your standard North American lobby. There's nothing we can say about that yeah, one. Yeah, honestly, not too much. I am actually excited to see a Sentinel Cecilla. I don't know if I've ever seen that personally. Maybe Deus played it in the past, and I'm just kind of blanking on it right now. Probably that's the case, but I'm looking forward to that as well. I know me and you... <clears throat> Apologies, we've been watching Korea here for a long time now, so we're kind of used to that. But man, does it feel good to be back home in good old NA. I'm ready for it. We are loaded into our first lobby of the day, and let's see what everybody's going to be doing. I am curious uh, as far as what everybody's doing for routes, planning. Uh, maybe there's been some switch-ups. Uh, the big thing uh, that I think of off the top of my head is No Flame uh, usually does like to go for that first temple tree. But of course, you know, they usually built that for Totem. Uh, but now, actually, Totem is made out of a Mithril Shuvi instead of that Tree of Life. And how do you feel about that change? 
it's definitely something, in my opinion, that completely balances the utilization of Totem. It was just such a good item. I mean, we all know how good Stasis is in general, especially in a mm -hmm. game like this with teams that are actually coordinated. We've seen people just completely stomping other teams just with the Totem single-handedly. You focus so much on that one source, and then they just go into Stasis. You can't hit them for a few seconds, and then most likely you're going to die. Team No Flame has been one of our best representatives when it comes to making use of that item in the early stages of the game. They will not be able to do that in the early phase is on fourth from here but they still have other options to go for we have a ton more objectives coming out especially at the introduction of season eight a lot of different ways for you to get it four objectives dropping at night number one we have six total teams which means there's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to go to one that doesn't have anybody on it a lot of ways for transitions here today sirk yeah, I'm really wondering what a lot of these teams are going to be feeding, you know, in terms of uh, which player. Uh, the definite one um, I can already see is, of course, Lily Petal on that <laughs> Adrenaline Aya. And I can already tell that is most likely an AR. I don't think I even got a guess about that. Unless we're seeing the the fabled Adrenaline Sniper Rifle. Nah, it is, of course, going to be the AK-12. <laughs> Surely be, with uh... the Andromeda, right? <laughs> yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. That is, uh, that that's a, that's a classic, you know, the Polaris Maverick uh, Green Factory, go. if you're remember the really old days but yeah i am excited i have not been seeing a lot of ak-12 ever since uh agni came out many many moons ago of course you know uh ak-12 i feel like really fell to the wayside but they uh did change up ar i believe it was sometime this season so we've been seeing a little bit more diversity you know i i did see a type 95 a while ago as well so i'm kind of uh you know maybe we'll see one today maybe in our future but i am looking forward to this and it looks like mac call already trying to get on top of frankie Frankie will be on the bike, the Diamond Shard, going to proc and everything, but Frankie, of course, with that bike, going to be able to get out of there right now. Yeah, nothing too much happening, right? This is pretty standard, I would say, nowadays. Mactel just trying to build up a couple of his items. Didn't have his weapon either, so didn't want to overchase that full fuel gauge for the Sylvia in the early stages on here. But only 10 seconds left until we have our night one phase for game number one. This is going to be a fun one as, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of people are spread out through the map at the moment, so no real hard focus on a couple of these objectives. It is still, as a matter of fact, going to be that Tree of Life picked up here for Team No Flame, although Frankie Doodle once again being jumped on by a couple people here this time around it's yeah. cow stick will not be able to chase this any further frankie gets off their bike but enough distance has been gained they do maintain their life as their teammates up and towards the top side of the map will be able to secure that tree of life for themselves yeah very great job done to them and now let's see we do have esther over here in chapel as well going to be beating up with his teammates meek speedy and Poisson, all on their best characters which is not surprising to me at all esther one of my favorite lores to watch the north american g work if you will you know of course but even g work uh, after what we've seen this week and i don't know how many of us would be keeping up with the rm but it might be a might be a theodore move for esther i don't know you know what i mean <laughs> true we've got to bring out some of the uh, fun team compositions here oh. for some of our players but our big first fight happening up and towards the top side of the map alley the magnificent ultimate of the uh, of the elena gonna be going down the freeze is still going through that's a beautiful blink cartridge coming down from lily petal as well a lot of distance gained here for the side of oozing e-girls they will be able to at least get out with their lives or maybe they were the ones to get away with just a little bit more advantages as a lot of health damage was exchanged in that fight but nothing conclusive at this point uzma trying to rest up for himself everyone on the side of the left all healed up and ready to go they still still want to try something here, but these are double IRMs in very tight corridors. Very tough to fight into either one of them. Looks like they're going to be retreating into Avenue right now. Looks maybe. I don't know if they want to fully commit to this fight right now. Of course, no blank cartridge or anything. Drowning Kittens not having their ultimate or anything. That Dance Club being such a huge ultimate for them. Now it looks like we possibly might have another fight. Superior trying to get a pick onto Esther. Goes in with the dash not much going to come out of it right now we'll be able to walk out with that shield the cc immunity being so great a not gun stunned up as well it's like everybody's going to be poking back and forth a little bit meek sitting right around the corner waiting for somebody just to check him superior trying to fish for anything there but it's not going to happen in school our battle zone will be coming up factory as well nika nika sushi going to be on the ground the first person to go down right now. Oh my goodness, Shuvi. Let's see. Are they going to be able? No, I don't think they're going to be able to get Niku Niku Sushi up for this. Unless, actually, it looks like they will. Uzma going to be able to pick him up. Lily Petal, meanwhile, trying to just actually oh. fend off everybody. Huge shield, actually, there. Poor Lily doing so much damage, but unfortunately will fall down to the ground. 
but there we go that is unfortunate there they have lost that factory battle zone and now Passant actually trying to be on the run but actually is about to get the abc treatment and that is Passant's team falling down here in the school battle zone as well oh man already these fights yeah, we now have two teams left inside of the school battle zone at the moment. Team No Flame as well as Team Equio, please. They're both trying to get whatever they can right now. This is the only drone that is left in this area, and we know how fast these nerve gauges start stacking up, so these people have to start moving quickly here. So the gauge slowly but surely being recovered on the side of Equio, please. You should start seeing those timers start popping very soon here. Superior is going to go in. A lot of damage dealt over onto Dezu. They will be able to knock him down, and the timers have been reset. Here, you're not knocked down yet. There we go. Superior does go down. Sakamata gets taken down here as well. Does Drowning Kittens actually have enough time to outlast the duration of everybody else is the question. They're trying their best right now. They want to chase down that Elena as fast as possible. Superior down on the ground and it is going to be enough as Anot will knock down. I believe it was actually Frankie who knocked down the Elena. Yeah. There's a top site there and they will, as a matter of fact, be able to take away that battle zone first off and it is going to be that clot of green that you and I were talking about last night as well for this team here. Yeah, great job towards them, the Kladaw Ring. You know, we see it a lot recently, even despite the nerfs. I feel like it is still a great item for team modes, especially Frankie having Sentinel. It's going to be shields on shields on shields everywhere for these teams. And we have a uh, Mactal, Caustic, and them, and Triss just sitting in the bush right now, possibly waiting on something. Nothing really going to come out of it right now. But oh, now it looks like Drowning Kittens and Sakamata on the run once more. Uh oh, A not superior and Frankie might be looking for a second fight, a redo of what happened at school. Sakamata. Out that puppet theater, knocking up Superior, but of course Superior loves these giant hallways. Looks like they're gonna try and kite away. Superior still fishing for anything to look for a stun. Nina's going awfully low as well. Nina, just a little bit more in yet down right now for them but that means the trigger has been pulled frankie's trying to go in no more gas for him right now they are currently they're just chasing so hard shuby my goodness <laughs> Yeah, they really want the Sakamoto without Nina is easy fish yeah. at that point. They, there you go. They will end up knocking that fish out of the water. Sakamoto down on the ground right now in archery range. As people going into some of these objectives, night number two, this is where some of our big objective play has to come through here. And it does seem like we have two teams hanging around here. It is going to be Team Riz as well as Team High Papaya trying to contest for this forest ba uh, not for battle zone, but the Tree of Life right now. The initiation does come through from Mactel, knocked up all over the place Very at nice the job. moment. He he will stay alive for now. Triss is the first one down on the ground. Chaostic not really having an in on that fight. We'll have to back away from there. And that means it's going to be an easy tree of light picked up here for Passant. Team Riz picking up a big win over in Forest. Yeah, huge win for them. That is massive. Triss down for the next 20 seconds. Kiausik and Maktal going to have to retreat in the cemetery. Honestly, these teams are actually kind of spread out right now. Despite actually Superior and Drowning Kittens team right next to each other over there in Beach Hotel. Sushi also, they're all going to be TPing into Uptown right now. This is actually, man, this is going to be a spot. This is just such a spicy game so far, isn't it, Shuvi? It really is. There hasn't been anything too conclusive yet, right? Because we haven't had any full teams being eliminated yet, and it is still night number two. But as we start hitting the eve of, you know, day number three, this is going to start getting a lot more tough for these teams uh -oh. that doesn't have that many ways in. Passant trying to look for an angle. Will not be able to find it on Lily Petal for now. Eating a ton of damage. I don't think that charm was what you wanted to eat there, Passant. Will get knocked down. I don't know what they ended up doing with that Tree of Life. It does seem like the Glacial Shoes were at least transferred over onto this team that has a couple of characters that they want to run that item. The Irem of Niku Niku Sushi will be able to use that. We did see the Missile Team not going to be used for anything on this team, at least. But additional 15 credits going over onto them might be 12. I forget. <laughs> Something like that, you know. But oh, now it looks like Frankie and them are trying to go on top of Galazor Deus and them right now. Let's see. Oh my goodness, they just won Galazor dead. I don't blame them right now. Everybody's leaving just because it is about to be day three. And if Galazor dies right now, he's still able to come back in 30 seconds. That's going to be everybody full retreating right now away. And now I'm curious what's actually going to be happening over here in fourth. 
It'll be something that we can see in the next few minutes, because again, as I mentioned, Nerve Gauge is going to stack up really, really fast for these teams. It is going to be that drone towards the top side of Forest that will be the one that people have to fight over, but they're spending a lot of time just walking up towards this objective right now. Dezu does end up eating a lot of time, but look at the gauge difference at this point between these two teams. Oh, Uzi E-Girls have to do something, and they have to do it quick here. They have a lot of zoning utilities on the side of this team right now, but they have to try to find a way in. Otherwise, they're just going to unfortunately die to timer. Dezu trying to do something here for himself. Dezu is going to stay alive, and then Leyla stays alive as well. Look at the timer. It's going to be a lot more problematic in a couple of seconds. As There we go. It's starting to tick down a little bit. Restore back up. Dezu trying to stay alive. He will not be able to do it. Drowning Kitten's also down as well. Now, Sakamata is the one in a lot of trouble with the timer, and it is going to be using you girls who ends up picking up that forest battle zone for themselves. Ooh. A wonderful play that spread out throughout the whole time, and great results for them as we have a couple players falling down over oh, in Cemetery no. as well. Two players down from Team Gapasaurus, Scalazor and Deus out of game number three, for, uh, game number one most likely. Yeah, and I saw a lot of transitions actually going on to No Flame as well. Altair out for Frankie Doodle. I believe I saw a Tellurian there for Superior as well. And there's that totem we know and love. And oh no, Passant's team trying to currently recuperate right now. I don't think this is the fight that they want. Just going to try and leave completely Superior Anon. Frankie just going to be sitting over there in Cemetery still as well. And it looks like nothing more going to come out of this one. Unfortunate that Galazor and Daves fell like that. Going to just have to leave Mies right Sadly, is our first rat of the game. Oh, man. But now, actually, we do have Wick in 45 seconds. I believe it's going to be Cemetery, of course, for our lovely doctor coming up. Looks like Lily Petal also going to call in a four score. Esther calling in that Tree of Life. Ah, everybody's getting their upgrades nice and done, Shuvi, before this Wick starts. Yeah, we're at that quiet before the storm as we start heading into our next night phase of day number three and 20 seconds here with weak spawning. I mean, I will say cemetery is like the only zone that's available from the looks of it right now that does have the entryway for Wickling, which means, you know, looking at the mini map, it's going to be Team No Flame sitting on that objective. And we've seen this time and time again throughout the course of the season. They have so much uptime on those objectives. And they're able to sit right in front of it with absolutely zero contestion, seeming to be like it in this game as as well this is going to be an easy objective going over onto no flame their mid late game is going to be guaranteed at this point because they're so tanky at this point too all tie air on on frankie doodle means that each individual heal is going to heal for so much on top yeah. of everything else that is going to be an amazing objective going over onto no flame congratulations to them for getting it in game number one they just need to make sure they can use it and take it all the way till the end yeah, let's see. Now we possibly have a fight breaking out. Sakamata did get knocked up there by Passant's little combo. Passant try currently trying to build that clean up once again while Meek grabs the meteorite. Lily Petal's team here as well. Lily Petal looking strong as ever. New chest piece online. Judgment as well with the fallen Pegasus. They are looking great. Should we possibly looking for another tree of life from somewhere to be able to get that radar online? But oh man, this is so, this is such a juicy first game. These players are out here to play today. Guys, don't forget as well, this is just North America. We still have Europe for tomorrow. We have South America next weekend. All of our Lumia marathons will be finishing it up within the just the rest of the month i'm so looking forward to this if this is what na's bringing oh man these other regions are going to be just as good yeah game one pretty much everything is done textbook again i think that has been a pretty standard thing for you and i to see across squads or team modes Ooh. in general that's a beautiful whip wow. skill coming from esther drowning kitten zero chance to retaliate on that wow. one wow goodbye to the elena esther setting up a beautiful bait and hook on that one and that means all of a sudden team really sitting at a beautiful advantage down in dock right now everyone else on the side of team equio please has to run away their team just completely discombobulated with that one beautiful grappling hook oh my god esther he is on form today yeah we love to see it our laura here in and getting those big wow. grappling whips that's what you really want to see shuvi that was definitely a highlight right there. Oh man, poor Drowning Kittens though. I know how awful it can be to be on the receiving end of something like that, but still, the beauty of a play like that cannot go unnoticed from any of us. Oh man, but now it is day four, Shuvi. We still have four full teams left up. And I'm actually wondering what our final zone is gonna be. It is swinging down towards the Southern side of the map. Do you think, what do you think it's gonna be? Any predictions? I want Doc. 
I want okay. Doc. If we get a Doc Final Zone game number one, this is going to be the funniest situation that we get. Because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these teams are very good at these vertical areas where it is going to be a straight line down to try to knock some of those teams down. And we saw temp zones being so important in North, in uh, what is it, in the Korean server. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing here as well. It's been the same idea the entire season. A lot of zone controlling, especially with traps being built by a lot of these teams here to try to get that advantage as they move on. We have to see if they are going to be able to continue to do that throughout the course of this game. Although maybe we might see a little bit of initiation here another again. Whip. Another beautiful whip skill from Esther. But the charm goes through and Esther is actually the first one to fall. Meek's going to get taken down here as well. Passant has to completely book it and run as two of his teammates now down in the ground. A beautiful whip skill pulled from Esther. But then the charm coming down from the IRM. Locking down both the Yuki as well as the Laura. A beautiful play coming there from Niko Niko Sushi. Yeah, and it looks like we have Dezu and Sakamata. I thought maybe they were going to try in third party, but I don't feel like they think it's worth it right now. Of course, just trying to play for that placement. But all these teams are slowly falling apart. What was four full teams now is only three, Shuvi. And oh no, is, is anybody going to check the bush? <gasps> No, I don't think. No, they're not actually going to check the bush. Oh, no. Oh, Sakamata. And oh, man, they get to live for another day. It looks like Passant now going to have to run. Nico on actually just going to go over the wall and into factory. Oh. I, oh, okay. <laughs> little sneaky play there, Passant. I respect it. But they do have a camera in here, so they will know where he is. And Lily Petal's going to be sitting right there in the bush ah. waiting for him. Oh, Passant, the corner is not where you wanted to go, my friend. No. And that is our first full team out of game number one, Shuvi. Yeah, but step in the right direction for Roy as well as Sakamata and Dezu as they outlast a couple of these other teams here. They will get a little bit more placement points when it comes down to it, but they still have a lot more work to do. Roy just cosplaying the boar right now, standing right on top of it inside the chapel, a very less populated area, so he should be fine until it does go into the final zone and we do get the satellite radar. Anod is going, Anod is going, he wants to look for these angle flashes are absolutely Ooh. huge. Triss has no way to counter whatever just happened there. Everyone's sitting on top of the expected acceptance speech they just don't care at this point Macto trying his best to run away but you can see the gauge on Frankie Doodle is all the way to the max and this should be Mactile falling here a beautiful kill rotation coming from no flame this team just feels unstoppable and their weak buff is already gone yeah, that is crazy to me. Oh, and now Mii's really just looking at them. <laughs> Sitting there watching the fight. And actually, Shuvi, apologies, but your wish has not been granted. It is going to be a Chapel final zone here for yeah. game number one today. Oh, man. Let's see. Actually, only two full teams left. Everybody else down on the ground. Triss is actually still alive, funny enough. Let's see. If maybe, is Kalsic going to be able to go for that? I don't think, Cal oh no, Kalsic is going for it. Yeah, Triss is back up. Yeah, a good pick up there for Kalsic, and they really do need that, Leon, if they want to build a little bit more of that frontline setup for themselves. Remember, the game is not over until the end of the game screen is up and online, even for Team No Flame right now. They might have a lot of advantages going for them, but if they just get caught out like this a couple of times, they're going to be in a lot of trouble for themselves too. Sakamata going to be eating a lot of timer here. Superior will be able to push them out, so now we start going in into these temp zone phases where we have to start seeing which teams actually have all those traps that really allow them to get these leads as well as the zone control here for now i see a couple pendulum axes being built for some of our players here a couple teams hanging around with some of these minor traps that you got to build a lot of it does seem like the plan is in the right state of mind for now. We have Kalsic starting to walk back in, but they don't have anywhere else to go. Except in speech down on the ground, but the knockup comes through, and Kalsic's going to get taken down with no play dead available there. Not enough stacks for their passive, and goodbye to the Jenny. As Breeze right getting chased down here as well. That's a beautiful suture, but at this point, he uses the emergency surgery to go back in. Roy's going to get chased oh, down no. by Frankie. Doesn't have enough fuel to at least chase him down with the bike. But you can see the distance already being gained here. It's not going to be enough for Roy to get away. Our second full team to fall and that will be gappa source for game one these teams are going to keep falling really fast dezu and sakamata versus uzma's team right here let's see no they're just going to actually walk down here to the south side of chapel there's 60 seconds though left for this temporary final zone who are actually going to be the ones to go in first shuvi it's going to be this is going to be really close oh no this is oh let's see the only 10 seconds left they need to do something right now you guys just have to unfortunately go 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 Triss might actually be, or oh, are they actually going to be able to get a kill on Triss? Only a few seconds left. There's the surf's up and everything, and no.
But now, Shuvi, 1v1, Ooze and E-Girls in no flame. Your two final teams here in game one. Oh, boy. Both teams are super well set up right now. They have a couple of traps down on the ground, at least double guillotines in the inventory of Superior. Everyone else, slowly but surely, you gotta move in. There we go. Perfect play here from Oozing Eagles. They need to get some of this zone control down ASAP right now. Pendulum Axe is going down on the ground. We see a couple double guillotines down on the ground too, but now they're cornered into a little bit of an area that I don't think any of these guys want to be in. This is a very tight quarter that you really cannot run through at all as these guys. You have to find another way in. The zone control has been lost here for Oozing Eagles. They have a little bit of time to try buying before maybe they are completely out of options but Anok getting poked down pretty massively should give them a little bit more control remember we do have Frankie Doodle sitting on that Sylvia a lot of sustain for these guys right now and yet again it's another very kind of uh, lateral areas where you don't have that many angles to play off of Sylvia's healing will hit many people we are going to be going down into the end game for game number one soon sir Oh, and now Anok getting absolutely shredded by Lily Petal on that Aya right now. Look at the damage. Blank Cartridge out as well. Anok kind of taken out of this fight. Everybody from Oozing E-Girls is completely healthy right now, though. They're currently on the chase for him, but I don't think that's what they want to be doing. 40 seconds left on the timer for No Flame. But, oh, man, what a crazy, just absolutely insane amount of damage coming off from Lily Petal. The full adrenaline stacks and everything. And now these traps are here as well. No flame. They have a lot of work. There is the EMP drone to disable some of the traps. But, oh, here we go. Lily Petal kiting away right now. So much damage coming out. I can already see it. They have a lot of bullets. Big surfs up. Oh, not... Oh my God, there's just so much, Shuvi. We already have Nico down as well as Superior. Anot's going to join them. And now it's up to Frankie. Can he 1v2 this? He's at a quarter HP right now. Lily Petal, though, has the damage. And yeah. that's oozing. E-Girls taking game number one, Shuvi, with 11 kills. Such a clean play coming out from these guys. Slowly but surely, they continue to chunk people down over and over again. Those assault rifle shots ringing true wow. for Lily Petal as she goes back onto one of her right-click characters for the ages. Buffs to assault Ooh. rifle Aya coming through in recent times. Definitely helping out yeah. in the damage department there. But my goodness, I mean... You would have to say that at the beginning of that fight, No Flame had a really, really solid advantage, especially inside of Champ, yeah. very difficult to push through. But losing you girls again, slowly but surely, just poking people down, playing it slow, everything by the books, managed to push them away, get the zone control again, and then in the end, beat the 1v1 in the team fights versus Team No Flame. Congratulations to losing girls. Yeah, even the EMP drone was able to disable the traps, but it just didn't matter at the end. Lily Petal able to kite them so effortlessly on that AR Aya, building up the adrenaline in no time. The judgment is also, I think, one of the biggest deciders. Having 120 bullets in that magazine to be able to just constantly rain down damage is unparalleled on somebody like Aya, and that was just a beautiful finish to game number one, I will say. Yeah, and I have to give real big props to Lily Petal there, I think, with a few exception of like maybe some flashes that Anot threw at her. She didn't get hit by that many skills, which really yeah. kind of bumped up the amount of DPS she was able to push out, especially with that judgment on the Assault Rifle Aya too, so an incredible job there. The micro gameplays, I think you and I have noticed throughout the course of the season, a lot of these games are being fought in the way that a lot of these teams want to, it's just these very small, minute micro decisions that really determine who is the one to win out the fight, who is the one to not. Uh, I also want to give it up uh, for uh, Nico and Uzma in those fights because, of course, Lily Petal was able to pop off due to their support. Great surfs up coming out. Just great stuff from Nico as well. She was doing fantastically. And Uzma, man, you are doing good as always, brother. And let's see if they're going to be able to keep up that hype in game number two. I'm going to be excited for whenever it comes on up. There's a lot to look forward to today, especially if that's how game one is going to go. Oh yeah, and looking at that game result, I do believe we do have the scores post game number yeah. one. So uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Let's see here. Oozing E girls, of course, with their performance here, eight total kills outside of the battle zones means they will have sixty-four points overall. And uh, you know what? This is absolutely amazing. I mean, Circadia, what do you think about the scores right now? Yeah, no, I think honestly, it's it's it just as how expected after that. Oozing E girls, sixteen points ahead of No Flame right now, which doesn't really surprise me. Um, especially well, you know, deciding how the uh, 
end of the game went there. Doesn't really, uh, you know, take. I'm not shocked by it whatsoever. But we still have a lot more games to go. Four left today, of course. Out of you know, there's going to be a five total amount of games. As uh, you know, we said before, if you guys are joining us, you know, it is a five game set today. So there's still a lot of opportunity for these teams to be able to catch up to everybody. And I wonder if we're going to see any big changes coming in game two. I think everybody's going to give it like another try, you know, uh, for their comps and everything. So I don't think we're going to be seeing too many changes. But uh, I'm excited, honestly. Like we said, after game number one, it was fantastic. Uh, the players were doing great. Um, yeah, North America's back, baby. Yep, and it's nice to be home for you and I. This is yeah. this is where our comfort zone is. The end of the season is very nice for you and I because we're being able to kind of spectate games with the calm, you know, cool demeanor of Eternal yeah. Return in its fundamentals. Now we are back at our comfort zone in our home region as well for North America. We are literally living the best of both worlds, man. This is awesome. Living, yeah, living the dream. We have been working so much this weekend, though. And, you know, like we said, we hope you guys are just able to stick with us through the entire time. It's just been fantastic, truly. I'm having such a fun time. Yeah, I very much am as well. And hopefully the, the players are also doing that as well, right? Because we cannot discount the amount of effort they also put in throughout the entire course of the season, consistently showing up to these tournaments to make sure they get enough circuit scores to get to where they are here today. Of course, especially for Team No Flame, they've just had, been having such good performances throughout the course of the season here. And they are here trying to put on that dominating show. Fell a little bit short during game number one, but you can see the amount of preparation that they have done here and the amount of effort that they're putting in to try to get those scores, try to get those kills, trying to get those snowballs early as their team really should. Yeah, no. Oh, man, they've been doing just so fantastically. I believe we also have a little bit of an updated score sheet, actually, after yeah, that, if that. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just a little bit. But, yeah, of course, you guys can see the updated scores and everything. I believe it was just a little, a little, uh, not really the scores on the right-hand side, but I believe it was just the right side <laughs> thing. No, no worries, though. Don't worry. Our lovely uh, scorekeepers and production staff, they're all getting it done in the background while me and Shuvi are out here talking about these lovely, lovely players. But, yeah, we should be getting into lobby number two here relatively soon everybody's going to be joining up and shuvi what are you looking forward to for the uh, next round of this right now i think one of the biggest things that i want to be looking at from these guys is if their teams are going to be consistent or not right because as i just mentioned yeah. in season eight throughout the course of the whole season here the idea is that a lot of these teams are playing characters that they are comfortable with and they're also getting fights that they also want to fight most of these fights that are being determined with one team losing and one team winning is just by these very small, minute micro decisions that come through here that allow these teams to either pump out the damage, stay alive more, and stay alive throughout the course of the fight too. So I think for the most part in game two, it'd be okay if these guys still go with their comfort picks. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. Even the picks that we didn't expect coming out from some of our players here. Yeah did look comfortable enough for them to continue running their strategies. That's what we're going to be looking here in game number two, at least on my end. But it's too early in the day to call for any big, big change-ups, I think. Yeah, honestly, like, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about it earlier, but I feel like everybody's going to try and give, like, one, maybe two more games. Maybe, you know, the intermission buff that I know we always talk about will come yeah. through. But, yeah, I feel like everybody's going to keep picking the same thing. Uh, for right now, honestly, uh, a lot of these players, as you said, look very comfortable. I'm sure they've been practicing like crazy. We did have that rank squads night last night. Everybody yeah. kind of everybody kind of could get in the last little bit of practice that they needed, uh, depending on, you know, what they wanted to to practice. I will say whether it's uh, mechanics, if they want to meet up somewhere new routes, new planning. But. I'm looking forward to it. Game two is always where stuff really starts to get, you know, intense. You know, I'm sure we've seen it a hundred times before, but it's always a fun time. You know, I can't ever get enough of Eternal Return, huh? Yeah, absolutely not. And I was honestly surprised that we had a uh, ranked squads, although I guess at this point, especially with season finals coming up today, it should have been a uh, given that a lot of people in NA were going to try to queue for squads. But the amount of support that I think the community has poured into these teams to make sure that they also got enough practice is something that's also very uh, heartwarming to me. North America, yeah. amazing region, never alone for a reason for us. Uh, yeah, just to <laughs> genuinely appreciate all the support that the community has poured for all of our players here, not just this weekend, of course, but throughout the course of the season here has been an immense amount of support that really would not have been possible without you guys here. But yeah, I mean, we're slowly but surely getting ourselves prepared for game number two, and I'm honestly super excited after that game number one. 
Yeah, it was a crazy game number one. I know we keep talking about it, but of course, I am looking forward to game number two. And as Shuvi, I also kind of want to echo his statement of thank you all to everybody out there that was able to help out with these players getting their games in it. A big thank you to all the tournament organizers as well over the season so far for all the hard work they've been doing, putting in the hours. And Shuvi, I'm going to give a big thank you to us as well for casting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a all, little bit of a no. pat on the back for us, right? individually, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. No, but of course, I also have to be, uh, give a big thank you to all the other lovely casters that have been casting through Season 8 so far as well. Oh, man. I love seeing all of our new casters and everybody come out there. It's so great, isn't it, Shuby? Yeah, absolutely. And in the end, you know, what really matters, at least for us here right now, though, are the players here. We are going to start going into our character selections, which have been locked in for game number two. Not too many different things, as you and I thought, but just one yeah. small change that is uh, pretty apparent there. Galazor will be swapping off of his Foria Fiora, going over onto the Felix here for a game number two, which, in my opinion, I do like it here. It's just a little bit of a problem when, uh, <laughs> you know... Compared to the team that he used to be in before, he's not going to have that much um, team sustain for himself. He will be running that diamond shard as he usually should. The only real uh, sustain source that he's going to have access to is going to be the Sentinel from Deus. So I wonder if Galazor is going to be able to stay up in the front line as much as he wants before. And if Mizor and Deus can capitalize on the fact that a lot of people are going to be focusing down on this Felix to really get the damage out. Yeah, I'm excited to see Felix. You know, I know our lovely man Rez uh, made uh, tank Felix popular here in North America. At least I know. I know we. I know we kind of the technology from Korea. Don't get me wrong, but I still love watching some of those good old tanky Felixes come on through. But it's a shame uh, next uh, season when you know no more Felix for him. He'll be completely onto the Arda. You know what I mean? I'm. Uh... <laughs> it's been a good but, time. It's been a good yeah. time for him. Rest in peace, Rosito Felix, uh, 2022 to 2023. You know what I mean? We got to get a headstone made for him for uh, <laughs> for next season. The fan but art's coming in. I'm excited for season nine in general. A lot of good stuff coming. We only have a little under, what, three weeks left, I believe, in the season. So we're getting closer and closer. We have Vanya coming out next week as well. So many great things. But the season nine characters all look like so much fun. I've been looking forward. You know, who's uh, personally, who are you looking forward to most, I will say, in season nine? I'm also, I feel like I have to ride the uh, the Rezito hype train here. Art of gameplay, I, I, I haven't, I'm not, I wasn't uh, somebody who really played uh, the original battle of the Black Survival games, but you know, after hearing Rezito's very um, enthusiastic speeches on how Art of work in general and how that might translate over onto Eternal Return, I guess I very much am to see how Art of himself is going to be implemented in the game like Eternal Return with the state that it's going to be in Season 9. Yeah, no, I am wondering what is going also to be happening in Season 9. I'm sure we'll get a dev stream and everything, uh, you know, to confirm what's going on. But we're getting closer and closer to Season 10, man. I can't wait for it. The big old release, Shuvi. Oh, that's going to be the best time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, it really will be. We're all we're all kind of uh, marking down the clock until that begins. Like, right? We have we surely all have our like timer set to make sure that every single one of us has the date as well as the alarms ring in as soon as the game officially releases here. Ah, it's been a long time coming, sir. Two and a half years that you and I have been doing this for a very, very long time. Actually, now we're starting to come up around the two-year mark for you and I casting in about a yeah. week or so here. So yeah, we've been doing this for a while and uh. You know what, the amount of effort that we've been putting into it, it's so yeah. happy for me to see that the effort has been reciprocated here. So much effort being put in by the community and a lot more effort being put in by the developers to try to reciprocate the amount of effort we put in as well. Yeah, it has been a crazy, crazy two years for us, man. I, I can't believe it's been that long, but Lord, we are... Oh, man, actually, hold on. A little bit of an early grief there almost onto Galazor. Okay, they want a little bit of revenge for last game, I think. <laughs> They're trying, they're trying. Yeah, but unfortunately, nothing there right now. Everybody's going to be still getting their builds online. Ten seconds left here in day number one as we will start having our first tree fights, our meteorite fights, or lack thereof in this case. <laughs> yeah, still three seconds until we do have our objective spawning here, right? We are having a couple of teams already prepped up and ready to go. I will say a couple of items missing over on the side of the Leon, so he's going to just have to back away here. Roy seeming to be in a little bit of trouble himself, but we will use that speed gate to get himself on up. 
out of there, trying to miss out on some of those hunts inside Beach, that's okay as long as he stays alive. But he hyperloops into uh, directly everybody of uh, Team No Flame right now. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, run, Roy. I, I don't... Uh, oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I think God. he's accepted his fate, and I don't blame him at that point. I think he realized what was going on. I think he saw, <laughs> I think he saw Frankie and Superior and was like, ah, that must mean a not to tree. So I'm about to get absolutely cornered. Might as well just die. Don't blame him one bit for that. But now, oh man, how unfortunate there. <laughs> yeah, it's early enough in the game where the death timer isn't too, too massive. So yeah. at least you, know, you get to die early. Just take a little bit of a breather. Reset your mental while you are looking at that gray screen. But for Roy, he will be back up here, right? Trying to join up with his teammates over in Pawn. Maybe it was a misclick over in uh, Tempo. Because I saw a couple of his teammates inside of Pawn. So that could have been a little bit of an oopsie there for Roy. But that will set up at least for Team No Flame an early kill snowball for them of course the tree of life still picked up for those guys so that's not going to be too big of an issue as okay this may be something pretty big here that's an instantaneous dance macabre coming through as well it seems like niku niku sushi is going to get locked down here as well john and kittens trying to chase down the leon will not be able to do so but an early and a fast kill coming in here for these guys a beautiful kill coming out for iku please yeah, very nice job there, Nick. Going down like that is going to screw up the tempo. I feel like it's losing E Girls a little bit. But Esther also most likely maybe about to go down. Frankie getting awfully low. Oh, Frankie goes down as well as Esther. Now it's a 2v2. Passant trying to take on Superior with Meek right there as well. The battle zones are coming up, but is it going to be fast enough? Anos resing Frankie right now. Oh, no. This is not what you want to be seeing, Meek. You gotta run right now, brother. There's that dash from Superior looking for a bait. Frankie's here on the bike, and that's... Oh, my God. Oh, Team Riz already taken out of game number two. Dude, the amount of sustainability that Superior has on the Sua. Oh, dude, you cannot let him do that. You gotta lock him down as fast as you can, try to get the damage out while he's crowd controlled. Never found that opportunity. Me got a good amount of damages in with his auto as well as a stun coming through, but you gotta actually do more on top of that. And it ends up leading to the full elimination of Team Riz here. They will not have a chance in game number two to get any more points here, except for the one kill that Pasanka. got, but we still have to continue the game here. It is gonna be an alley battle zone that is being fought by these two teams right now. A lot of damage being turned on towards Uzi E-Girls. Beezroy trying his best on that side as well. A lot of damage going down onto Lily Petal. Actually, will be fully eliminated here. Roy is also going to get taken down. Uzma trying to resurrect his teammate as fast as possible. The smoke screen goes down. Lily Petal comes back up. Uzma trying to run away from Galazer as much as possible. Galazer is going to get taken down. Uzma gets taken down to the ground. Deus, I don't think, has enough damage to try to deal with both of them. They will not. And that means Uzi E-Girls picking up the battle zone over an alley for themselves. And I believe no Flame picking up the one over in Pawn for themselves as well. Even getting the Alpha Mithril on top of it, I think. Yeah, that is insane. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of upgrades. I already know that is definitely going to go into Totem. I suspect there for Mr. Superior, as we saw last time. So not that bad. Oh yeah, there it is, of course. Already the Totem coming out. Are we surprised, Juvie? But... Now, I also wonder actually what did they pick up in the alley battle zone? Did we get it did we get a chance to see that? I can't remember. Probably the... Uh, actually, let's see. I don't think I caught that either, but looking at Uzma right now, it's most likely the Mithril here, the Totem coming through. They weren't the ones to pick up the one from Alpha. Surely they're the ones that called in the Mithril from the battle zone here instead, which is going to be pretty important. I think in the battle just now, in game number one at the end, Uzma uh, actually ended up passing the Totem over onto Niku Niku Sushi, who also stayed alive for the most part right at the end of that fight, thanks to the work of the Stasis, which bought Lily Puddle even more time to auto-attack, so a huge Huge, huge bonus going over onto both of these guys. Oh. Can see the importance of the Mithril in the early stages now. Except the speech down on the ground, Jeez. but it's not even going to matter. Roy never touched the ground before he got eliminated there. Kathy done and dusted. 30 seconds till he comes back up. Yeah, that was an insane pick out there from Mactal, Triss, and Cowstick. Right before Tree as well. That means, unfortunately, Deus and Galazor are not going to be able to go for it. Gaposaurus, unfortunately, has to leave that fight entirely. Oh, man, but now taking it over school, it looks like we actually have Ikuyo, please, along with No Flame over here fighting for the Meteorite. There's a great finish line there from Frankie just to be able to kind of zone everybody out right now. Anot's going to be grabbing the Meteorite. Not able to fully get it yet. Let's see. We might have an engage here. Nice shield over there from Superior to block the knock up from Irem. 
Now let's see. Superior definitely trying to fish for something once again. Trying to find that stun. There it is. And there's the big engage. A totem actually procked out there as well. Very nice job. But no damage actually going on to no flame. Sakamata trying to oh kite away with these God. autos, but it's not going to happen. Drowning Kittens unfortunately taken out of that fight, and it just looked too clean there from no flame. I, it's just so hard for these guys to find an in at all. I mean, you're exchanging Nina's health bar for people who can get healed up by a Sylvia instead. Like, like, that's not even for those guys. So this team is just having such good fights into a lot of their counter, uh, counter opponents here. They have so many ways to deal with those guys. Continuous pokes from Superior as well as Frankie. Guaranteed ins as soon as the stun comes through from Superior. Guaranteed outs if they don't even want to fight them. It is so difficult to match up into these guys, and they're still continuing to put on their aggression as Tris now going to be the one pushed into a corner, trying to jump across the wall, will be able to do it, but a massive amount of damage taken there right before he managed to get out, and he's completely split off from his own team. So this is not looking good for Tris either, and someone has to deal with No Flame sooner or later. They cannot just let these guys run rampant into yeah. these games like they have been doing so far. I'm also thinking that's going to be them possibly going to get Omega here very soon. They, of course, don't have their battle kits up to be able to get another battle zone. Unless they, you know, they're that cocky. I don't think it's going to be happening. <laughs> but, you know, you know that, that'd be kind of funny. But I don't think that's going to be happening here. The Purier actually taking a little bit of damage there as they teleport into Factory. This actually is a rematch of the end of last game. Shuvi, Oozing E-Girls, and No Flame are going to be joined in Factory right now. Let's see if they want to fully commit for this fight. This is going to be a close one, I feel like. Omega is, of course, here in Factory, and both of these teams won it. They are. <laughs> this This is going to be really I'm, I'm looking forward to it, though. But, oh, what is this fight going on over here? Uh-oh, this is that good. Of course, it is a battle zone, but still, whoever wins this battle zone, that is a free upgrade for whoever does win. Mizroy now looking for some oh. raid emergency surgery, actually. And that's Ikuyo, please, losing that cemetery battle zone. That was a beautiful, clean combo from Roy. Gosh, that was actually disgusting there from Roy. Actually managed to land Nina straight on towards, I believe that was Drowning Kittens at the end there, and then just completely eliminating everyone else with the emergency surgery too. So, wonderful plays there coming from Mies Roy. Still, poke, poke game being fought out here right around the Omega. It is going to be, again, as you mentioned, the mirror match between the two teams that was at the end as the final two full teams here. They're looking for advantages. They know how important a force core is going to be at this stage of the game. The Tellurian timepiece for Superior, of course, absolutely massive. You can go for the Flowers of Fate for, uh, what is it, uh, what is it, for Lily Petal there too. My, like, this <laughs> is, there's a lot of things that you could go. Dice of Destiny is going to be huge for an Assault Rifle Eye at this point, or even the Judgment, assuming that Lily Petal doesn't have it here, which she already does. So yeah, a lot more damage potential on the side of both of these teams at the moment. But you can see who's winning the poke battle right now. The healing potential from Frankie Duel just way too big for these guys to continuously keep up that poke consistently. Yeah, it is kind of hard there, but they're not backing off at all. They do not want No Flame to have any of these upgrades right now. And this is going to be hard, though. Uzma looking just to get a little bit of vision to find out where they are. This is going to be really hard. I think Lily Petal is able to put out that damage, but the question is, how does she not die here? It's kind of... It's difficult. Oh, they're actually going to be getting third apartied over here. Ikuyo, please, coming on into Factory. We also, I believe, that's Gaposaurus coming in from Chapel. But are we actually going to have a fight breakout? It might... Oh, no. Some, I feel like somebody's going to get third partied here in a second. We might have an ABC moment about to happen, Shuvi. Oh, yeah. This is going to be pretty dangerous, and especially with, uh, you know, Omega... Well, not despawning, luckily. <laughs> we still have about Nine. 30 seconds until we start going into night number three. Wick is going to be the one that spawns, and you can see the priority from these guys. They want that additional damage coming through, especially towards the mid to late game here. They are going to opt to go for the Wickling here instead. A lot more priority towards the Avenue area. Caustic King around here as well, so there might be a Frankie. little bit of contest compared to what we see before. Oh. Frankie in a lot of trouble. That's a beautiful stun coming down from Mactel, but they aren't able to finish Frankie off at this point. A little bit too scared of Superior and A not to try to completely invest into that, but now this gives time for Frankie to actually start building up his fuel. He's going to try to rest up here as well. A not just trying to buy some time. The acceptance speech goes down. It will actually charm Superior. The stasis does come through, and another oh, stasis oh, no. coming through for A not as well. Mactil's still staying alive. He's not going to be able to stay alive through the rest of it though. Frankie Doodle is alive. Superior and A not are alive too. The healing is there from the Sylvia. Chaostic is trying his best to get everybody in low 
low as much as possible, but look at the heals coming down from the oh radar gun, getting straight in line. Frankie Dude just sitting all the way in the back too. I mean, this is way too much healing for Kelsey to keep chasing onto this, but he wants to try it. He knows how much of an importance that kill could have been. Doesn't get anything, but now they have to jump onto the Wickley. That is disgusting. The fact that Frankie got completely caught out like that and still nothing came out of it. I also That's see it. Oh no. Okay, they actually are able to get the wick line, all the items as well, but I think Anon and Frankie might want them. No, they're not gonna be able to chase after that anymore. Also, Nico Niku Sushi and Lily Petal going down from losing E-Girls. I believe they died actually to Gaposaurus. Oh no, that is not good either, Shubi. Yeah, that's the benefit of running the composition like that though, right? The explosive fights, if it goes in your favor, there is so difficult to ever deal with the amount of damage that actually comes out there. Deus and Roy, as well as Galazor, they're trying to pick up the pieces that has been sprawled throughout the course of the game here. They need to pick those up to make sure they can make up for the performance that they had in game number one. Because, you know, we only have a best of five. That is not that many games, even if it might seem like a lot. A lot of tournaments nowadays have even yeah. more games than that for you to try to make up your points. Five really is not that much you can already feel that these teams are starting to get pressure they're looking for a lot more opportunities than they did in game number one playing outside of their comfort zones a little bit trying to get whatever opportunities they can to secure those points for themselves I'm actually, you know, really proud of Gaposaurus right now. I know they had a little bit of a rough early game, especially I believe Roy died twice, if I'm not mistaken. But now look at them actually taking down Nico and Lily Petal like that. That is, an, that is huge, especially with them uh, just being that high up on the leaderboard right now. It looks like they're just about almost tied with no flame for kills right now, getting close at least. Looks like they might actually get tied if they want to take this fight over here on the dock uptown border uh oh Roy's actually getting tagged up He's gonna actually go through him a lot is good oh there's the big elena old uh oh roy might actually be in a little bit oh. of a sticky situation oh but here comes the third party from no flame and let's see superior what are we going to be looking for here actually uses the stun on tanina there and there's another down drowning kittens actually gets the return oh no they're going down as well they was on the run right now. Sakamata also just about to die. And Galazor actually going back to Res Roy while Deus runs. That's actually a great third party for them. Holy what crap, the? Galazor just playing around the vision, just outside the vision range of No Flame, manages to pick up his teammate. Sakamata is actually going to be the one that takes the fall there. And now all of a sudden, it's turned into a situation where there's third party potentials literally everywhere for these guys. Team 6 is a little bit split apart. We do see that uh, you know No Flame does not want to contest any of these guys right now. A lot of cooldowns still already blown. Frankie Doodle not at max fuel oh. either, so they'll try to play a little bit safe here. But man, Haya Papaya could have found something big, just barely missed out on the opportunity but now Uzma gets found out inside a dock here as well. Galazor knows exactly what's going on. He's not going to let that happen at all from this Leon. We'll just round it out. Uzma trying to do his best, although we're okay. They're actually not opting to go for this. Doesn't want to try for the third party here. Maybe. Okay. They want to play safe because they don't have Deus here yet either. So they're just trying to play it safe. Don't want to go into any risky situations. Deus is going to start hyperlooping here as well. Probably. No, Where are you doing, now. buddy? What are you buddy, doing? We need to go. We can't. I don't know if he was waiting for them or something, but oh no, he waited way too long. Unfortunately, I don't know what the plan was, but yeah, unfortunately, way too late on his end, and he will get taken down. It's sad because he actually was able to live the fight beforehand, but yeah, that is quite unfortunate. But now Kiaos oh. that huge serves up there from Chris, and that's actually, I believe, Frankie may be gonna go down hey. here. He will. There we go. Maxal also falling awfully low. Is the damage actually there? Superior just about to fall as well. Now Anot's on the run. They're going to be rezzing Maxal. They just have to full kill Frankie wow. here. And that is a oh. huge surf up to be the Leon ultimate. Oh, man. Oh, at that point, I mean, the acceptance speech was down on the ground, but it just bought Kalsik so much space to actually continue auto-attacking. This is the crit variant as well, with a lot of the additional upgrades that we've been seeing towards crit nowadays. It might not be as consistent as before because of the nerfs to this consistent auto-attack and crit variant of the Jenny, but now this sets up really well, by the way, for Team Haya Papaya, the final team that is actually fully standing right now. Oh, okay. Gallows were playing a little bit dangerous there. Will fully step in towards the uh, the restricted area, but he'll be able to get out. It is uptown final zone. So with the 
teams kind of being split like this, this is going to get super hectic, right? We have traps that are going to be built by a lot of these teams here, assuming they even have the credits to do that right yeah. now. And it is Uptown Final Zone too. We have seen how chaotic this can get, especially with third party angles happening all over the place. This is going to be dangerous for teams that do not have timer. I was going to say the temporary final zones are, uh, you know, like just breast distance away from each other. You can literally just like look at everybody over there. You don't even you don't even need cameras or anything. You can straight up see what's happening inside the house from the <laughs> from the other final zone. Just to know in the third party. But oh boy, a little fight going on over here. Oh my God, absolutely destroying Dezu. Drowning Kittens has to get out of there right now. But that's a nice little pick there for Team No Flame. Kills or kills, right, Shuvi? But oh, Galazor and Mizroy might actually see this. Elsworth doesn't have a lot of upgrades. Oh, there they go. Hold on. Uh-oh. Cal 6 there as well. Ooh, are they going to find? They're actually going to go in the corner and check out what's going on with Anon Superior. But they end up... Oh, are they going to get third party maybe if they try and fight this? They're actually just going to force everybody out of there. And that's actually going to be thing to pull the fight. Drowning Kittens is here as well. Emergency Surgery out from Mizroy. Everybody's just fighting now. Oh my god, it doesn't even matter. We don't even need a final zone. This just... I, <laughs> what is happening? Everybody's running into the oh, fourth now. And now Macfall trying to chase down Galazor. What is happening? Superior okay. actually is going to fall down as well. That's no flame in fourth place. Oh my god. What was that? I don't even know. But whatever I saw, I liked it. These teams are still looking for angles to get these kills. It's going to be one of the temp zones being completely covered here by Team High Papaya. You can see the on the bottom side of the map. I mean, each individual player is trying to do whatever they can. Uzma has absolutely no timer to speak of, however. Caustic's aggressing onto this. They know they have such a big advantage. Galazor is actually going to fall outside of that as well, getting completely executed for himself. Uzma has absolutely nowhere left to go. That is going to be oozing E-Girls ending third place. And at this point, Roy has has done his job. Roy. It's going to get taken place for his team. Gapasaurus will at least be able to make up for the slight whoopsie that Dezu, and, uh, not Dezu, sorry, Deus ended up doing here in game number two. And you know what? If Roy's able to pick up a kill here, it's going to be pretty worth But look at the amount of distance that's going to be made here. Not going to be enough. Roy will get taken down. Congratulations to Haya Papaya as they pick up game number two. And it's going to be a total of six kills for them. A very solid performance coming out from these guys. Yeah, a great game, especially they looked really good there in Avenue during that wick take. That is really what I think they kind of came into their own more than anything. And so I think that was just fantastic. Really coming in just the, the end game there, I will say, actually, I think was my favorite part about that. The <laughs> yeah. way they just kind of they took wick and then they just kind of ran through everybody. You know what I mean? That huge huge leon ultimate there in uptown was one of the big deciders i feel like more than anything and i was like wow no flame just got taken down completely there yeah, and we can see how much of a priority that Wickling has to be for all of our teams here. Some mm -hmm. teams can be playing quietly for the first few minutes of the game. They want to try snowballing. Hey, go for the wick. If you do end up getting it, you can get that very offensive side of the next four or five minutes that you have the wick mm -hmm. bleed. It is so, so important for you to have that. And even if you're not fighting specifically during the duration of the bleed, maybe outside of it, you still get those transition items via blood sample very very uh, flexible in regards to who can actually use it and how they can use it nowadays too. So massive advantages coming out for these teams that do end up getting that objective. You need to try to go for whatever you can because there's not that many chances left for these guys to gather up points. Yeah. Oh, man. That is such a great ending to game number two, though. Hi, Papaya, man. That is so great to see them actually taking a win there for themselves. Huge fan of, of course, Calstick, Mactal, and Tris, some great people over there playing in these games. But man, yeah, great game number two. We have one more game to go before our intermission there. And are we expecting anything again? You know, like we said, maybe after game two, some of these teams are going to be making changes. Um, are you expecting anything different out of this? Or are we going to get more of the same, do you think? I will say, okay, again, I think it was very unfortunate that especially Team Riz ended up falling that early yeah. on into the game. But mm -hmm. their team comp, in my opinion, is fine, right? Like, sometimes you're looking for these opportunities, it just doesn't work out. And especially in North America, too, we've seen a lot of these fights, especially early on, not really ending in any conclusive manners. But the fight was split after a certain point, and when you're trying to 1v1 up against characters that have a ton of chase still available towards them while you're running out of utilities to work with... Yeah. You're, you're gonna die and that's what ended up happening to both i believe it was uh, esther as well as meek speed or might have been uh Passant and meek speed at that point too but it, it happens sometimes you just have to make sure that you get back into the game you kind you try to 
climb back from what ended up happening in game number two. And hopefully for Team Riz, they're able to do that. And maybe one of those ways to do it is try to change up some of those characters. But just looking at that roster, I mean, what are you really expecting at this point? Like Passant swapping over to Tia yeah. might be the only I, thing that I could think of? I mean, I know I don't know if he's the biggest fan of Tia anymore after the changes. Yeah. But we'll have to find out. But actually, we do have our scores there after game two coming on up. And as we can actually see, No Flame is out there in first place right now, coming on up with 96 points. Oozing E Girls followed up uh, with eh, after them with 72 points. Riz in third with 22. I'm sorry, actually, no, they are a little bit yeah, different. They going it a little no, bit. Yeah, my apologies. My brain, my brain is going everywhere right now. Shuvi, you want to explain that a little bit? My apologies. It's not ranked yeah. top to bottom. So uh, the way that the points are going to be formatted here for the next few games that we do end up seeing the scoreboard yeah. is I believe the order is going to be like top to bottom, the circuit points that they had uh, throughout the course yeah. of the season, right? It's going to be No Flame who had the most circuits, uh, circuit points throughout the course of the season. Next is going to be Oozing E-Girls. Next is Riz. So we're going to keep that order consistent. We're not going to be having these teams order in the uh, in the point departments, but just in the order that they had their circuit points. So you're pretty close. Uh, we do have No Flame in first. We have Oozing E-Girls in second. In, but it's going to be high papaya in third place with 60 points equio please as well as gaposaurus tied for fourth place right now both with 30 points and riz is going to be in fifth place or sixth place if you want to consider it like that with 22 points right now as well yeah oh man i am excited to see what is going to happen in game at number three though all these players are getting ready in the lobby of course trying to figure out what they're going to do for this game we might see some changes like i said but not too sure other than that, though, I think, honestly, it's been a pretty consistent day so far. You know, we're almost halfway through, of course. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm expecting much different today, like we said. Uh, other than that, is there anything you've been really wowed by? Or, like, you know, what's been your uh, favorite thing so far? I like how teams are already finding answers to one another. I think, you know, even in previous seasons, every single time Frankie Doodle and Superior was on a team, a lot of teams struggled to find answers to how they actually operate. But we're already seeing teams adjusting to those guys. They're actually being the ones to aggress onto them. Might have been a small, uh, small mistake there from Frankie Doodle to actually spawn in a random area instead of Avenue so that he's completely isolated from his teammates. It was one of the worst spawns that he could actually yeah. get with the top left of Avenue, which is uh, not what you want to do when both both of your teammates are down towards the south side near the Wickling spawn. Um, might have been a bit of a catalyst there in that situation, but it really opens up opportunities for these other teams to actually get those openings, and they're actually capitalizing, not backing away just because that team is Team No Flame. That's a good thing. Yeah, honestly, man, No Flame. It's, it's so crazy still. The fact that they were not able to pick Frankie out there more than anything. I was so surprised yeah. to see that. It was just nuts. I thought they really had him there, but that bike, after the changes especially, it is so powerful, Shuvi. It is so insane. And I know they did take away, of course, Sylvia self-healing, but in, in team modes now, duos and squads, I feel like it just got even crazier for her. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we saw the amount of healing. It's two very healthy characters, by the way. That laid into the game. Sua as well as a Fiora. Pretty healthy when you start going into the phase of Wick. Like they have what, maybe base 2.5k HP on both of them, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Sylvia healing was hitting them for like a quarter of their health per heal. So yeah. I mean it's pretty massive for them for the most part. Like as long as you know Sylvia stays alive, which Frankie Doodle is pretty good at doing on that character he will be able to keep his team sustained up so i want to see if a lot of our teams here are actually going to be trying to swap up a little bit of their priority in regards to who they actually knock down and if it does end up becoming frankie doodle maybe he can adjust his gameplay a little bit to adjust to that as well because again it's not just these teams that are slightly behind that's adjusting it's also these teams that are going to be very much ahead they're learning from their small mistakes that they are doing throughout the course of the game getting even better and better as these games goes on yeah, no, actually, and we don't really see... Actually, no, Passant is going to be on the team. Oh, <laughs> we boy. Were, we were correct about that, I guess. I'm surprised that they got the Adela. I, I don't know. I do think Esther has had some great picks there with the whip skill, of course. Meek looking great on that as well. I guess they thought maybe it was just they needed to get rid of the Adela right now in favor of the Sentinel Tia, actually, that's going to be coming out for this game. I believe everybody else for Game 3 here is going to be staying exactly the same as it was in Game 2 other than Passant.
Yeah, it should be the case. Uh, again, it's not too surprising for you and I, right? Like, we even were able to predict the Tia coming through. It was just kind of like one of those, you know, off thoughts that we had, but it is going to happen here. Um, it, it is North America, right? These people have their comfort picks. These people do have strategies that they ended up coming up with. So sticking to the fundamentals is completely fine as long as it's within the realm of their possibilities, which the Tia also falls in line with. So very happy about that one. And I am hoping that Passan is able to make use of this pick to the fullest right since even if the utility from the tia is gone she's been compensated with a lot of damage buffs on the side of her and i've been hit by a couple of those things dude they hurt <laughs> so yeah you can't just still willy-nilly walk into tia at all you still have to play around there and hopefully uh Pisan is able to play around that for himself as well yeah no i've really been enjoying tia lately i don't know how uh do you actually know how korea responded to the changes because i've been I don't know. I haven't really seen uh, too much Dia ever yeah, since uh, those not changes. At all. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I don't know. I've uh, always been I... mad quiet recently too, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've been really no, no, quiet over there. No flame again, right? But uh, yeah, Revolu's also been very quiet when it comes to the Tia recently too. So might be a bit of a difficult character to pilot, but it is still Passant, right? This man has been doing amazing work on Tia ever since he decided that you know Tia was another character that existed in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I think Tia's great, though. I do kind of like the changes that they did to her. I don't know if she'll need any tweaking, but I don't know. I think when it comes to this season, we there's been a lot of great changes, especially, you know, what they've done to Tia, what they've done to Sylvia. Um, I'm trying to think on the top of my head of any other character that I think maybe could use changes like those, but I don't think there's really a lot. Uh, the new characters that have been coming out, I think they've been doing fantastic with. Uh, Irem, you know, took a little bit to uh, kind of tweak properly, but I think she's uh, in a good spot right now. Um, Leon, I still think needs maybe a little bit more time in the oven. I've been enjoying her. Of course, she is banned for this tournament, so nobody's going to be able to play her anyways. Yeah. But other than that, I don't know. I've... Uh, I don't know. I think this season's been really good. You know what I mean? The battle zones have been great. Just It's just been fun overall. I think one of the greatest stories that you and I have got to witness throughout the course of the season was just like straight up the development of the yeah. battle zone. So cool things there. Frankie uh, isn't having any of that though. He's going to get taken down. And that means uh, she'll be down here for the next few seconds. But at least from the position that he is in, he's towards the end of his round. He's just looking for uh, ways to get to all of his little, uh, you know, his little good old uh, marathon, yeah. no, not marathon, what is it, the Grand Prix, Lumia there Grand we go, Prix, there is yeah. the word, yeah, Lumia Grand Prix, I was thinking Lumia Marathon, that's not exactly what it that's comes what we're to doing Sylvia, right now. but uh, exactly, that's what we're doing, that's not what the Sylvia is doing, so, cool oh. things there, uh, I don't know if that's exactly where Caustic wanted to be at all, he's going to be inside of the bush, Niko Niko Sushi also joining the fray, he's going to get chased down by the Siren, we'll be able to dodge away, at least on the knockup, but look at where he is in comparison to literally everybody else, he's going to be stuck in Inside a corner, losing E girls looking for a kill, and they will find it most likely in the next couple of seconds. Here, Kelsey just delaying their death a little bit further. It's not going to be a good sign for him. Yeah, I don't blame them though. Actually, that's great. Oh, hold on. I see a coup de bras in my eyes right now. Hold on, me getting big one out there. Gals are trying to actually, I believe, get a return pick over there, but it is going to be Gala going down here. Misery is going to teleport on in. Deus awfully low right now. There's the big Kathy ultimate, but hold on. It's unfortunately going to mean Passant down on the ground. Esther trying to do as much as he can right now. Meek, I believe, is just trying to grab the tree and everything and heal on up. They will be resin Galazor, but that's just going to be Meek and Esther making off like thieves in the night with that tree of life. Yeah, and they don't really care that at this point that somebody fell because they will nope. get resurrected anyways. But these objectives, there's a very limited amount. As long as you get that and get away with your life, that's a huge dub in your books. And that's what Meek Speedy and Esther will be able to do. Passant joining the fray yet again as he is going to resurrect here. So a good start for Team Riz. Way better than game number two, which is what we always wanted to see. You know, more advancements towards how they are able to play. Going to be always nice. And this should set them up pretty well, I think, going in towards the mid game here. Because we saw the amount of damage that Meek was able to do. And I think he was the one that ended up getting Alexander. I may have missed out on it because uh, Discord is being a little bit weird for me when it comes to organizing a lot of my uh, <laughs> UIs. But yeah, I mean, damage bonuses aside, like you want more movement speed on literally anybody. So if it is the Alexander, absolutely huge. If it's anything else, still huge. <laughs> it's big. It's always going to be big. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. But, oh no, Caustic, maybe in a little bit of uh, a situation there again. I do see a team Riz passing right on by. Don't think they saw Caustic that nighttime. Uh, I was going to say buff, but nerf in this case to that vision. You know what I mean? It's uh, to be killer. 
but in this case, it wasn't. So a very nice Kalsa going to be able to meet up with their team in hotel. 20 seconds till our battle zone started. Looks like Alley and Pond will be it for today. Not many teams moving there yet. They only got 10 seconds left till they can get over there. We also have Alpha in good old archery range. And yeah, honestly, very nice moves from everybody so far. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried here for Alpha at the moment because we saw, especially during game number two, No Flame was able to capitalize on the fact that Alpha actually wasn't taken at the end, uh, right before their battle zone was finished. Which means there's still opportunities as long as these two teams fight continuously over and over. But it's actually Frankie that falls first inside of the battle zone. What is going on over there? Oh, We're going to have Galazor fall, uh, Aina falling there as well, but the fight still continues on. It's going to be inside a pond, okay? It's going to be Gaposaurus actually knocking down No Flame inside of that pond. Battle zone for themselves, which means a full reset there. 14 no flame and more fights happening inside of the alley battle zone as well. Frankie's gonna spawn inside of archery range actually. More stuff happening towards the top side in the alley right now as well. More fights being pushed away, more things happening, and now that Alpha starts getting taken, I don't know if they have enough time. No flame is slowly but surely making their way down. We've seen what they've done in the past. Are they gonna be there in time? I do nope. not think so. Not at all there, and that is unfortunate. No Kladar ring, no Mithril, no nothing there for no flame. That is honestly a little bit uncharacteristic for them. I'm surprised they actually just got destroyed by Gaposaurus in that battle zone. Wow. But great plays there by Gaposaurus. Of course, Deus, Galzor, and Roy coming on up big. And man, just, yeah, day two not going their way so far. But now they're going to try and possibly look for a pick. Round three of the fight between No Flame and Oozing E-Girls. A rivalry as old season eight. Yeah, and in the end, right now, it's again, people just finding answers to Team No Flame. That's what we want to be seeing right now, and this might be a good initiation actually coming down from Oozing Eagles. Lily Pell all the way toward the backside. They're actually going to be able to dodge out up against that uh, Odyssey as well, but look at the health bar differences between these guys. Frankie Doodle still holding strong towards the backside. It's going to be a full on-scale retreat while trying to poke people out. That's exactly where the Sylvia wants to be at the moment. No stuns really coming out from Superior. A lot of skills actually oh. missing, and the auto attacks from Lily Petal are starting the herd. Aenos gonna get taken down here inside of archery range. Superior as well as Frankie Doodle now on the full scale retreat. They're trying to put as much space as they can for Superior to get out here. They don't want to lose as many people as possible. Try to not waste time if they can. And they will get away with their lives. More fights happening over in Forest, so it's a one for one exchange between these two teams on our screen. Calstic trying his best to run away. He's not going to be able to for now. As oh! oh no! The Leon misses the pool over, and I think this might actually be our first team that falls here. Triss is trying his best, but he's wow. going to get taken down. A full team elimination early on in day number two for game three. And unfortunately, it's the team Haya Papaya, the winners of our game number two, that takes the full brunt of that. Yeah, that is on. Fortunate. Triss not able to get over the wall with that duck dive. Just actually was the nail in the coffin, unfortunately. Oh, Meek. Wrong way, brother. Wrong way. Hold on a second. <laughs> Meek, Meek, Meek. Wrong way. Wrong way. Hold on. Let's back it up. Get ambitious. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. Right into Ikuyo, please. Kind of, uh, kind of a little bit silly there. I actually thought he might have gotten picked out there, but not going to be happening. And I believe this is also Gaposaur is going to be getting the tree over here in our hospital. Very nice pickup, but man, really unfortunate there for high Papaya to get down like that. That is so unfortunate. Yeah, and again, the fight splits up, right? You have a couple people trying to run away from each other, but then you miss the jump over from the Leon. I don't... Can Leon jump that wall? I mean, like, he was even in that the little cubby he where you're, can, like, the closest I to the other wall. Yeah, maybe it was just, like, a couple pixels off of getting to that spot, but it costs their team their lives. A single kill onto Calstic is all they're going to have, at least going into game number four. But at least this gives them a little bit more time to organize, right? Because now they have a little bit of time before the intermission, so they have some uh, organization Gosh, they can man. do. They can do a little bit of communication between their teammates as well. So hopefully we can see Equio play... Oh, no. Not equally, please. Sorry, Haya Papaya coming back strong in the second half of these games. Oh, Roy has to get out of there now. There's that big T ultimate, the full rainbow. Me with the damage as well. DS Wiki, he is doing it. Dave's going to knock him back with that Corona bubble. Oh, pullback as well. But I believe we're also seeing Galzor go down. Deus, the last one remaining. 
Wow, that was insane. Passant with the huge Tia picks. You love to see it. Yeah, I mean, this is why Passant loves to play Tia, right? Like, you can have all the crowd control in the world still be removed. You still have the yellow and blue tried, true, and tested at that point for that player, linking it directly into the full rainbow. And then by then, it's just done and done for Mizroy. A lot of good crowd control linkage from all of those guys, not letting Roy have an opportunity to even get that emergency surgery out. But this might be an interesting fight here. Aina taking a huge chunk of their damage, but Sakamata is forced to pop their soul link pretty early on into the fight here. Drowning Kins towards the backside. Sakamata is going to get taken down first. Dezu trying to do whatever he can. A great knockup, but the Sylvia is still alive. The Sylvia is still alive. You can't do any more than what you have already done so far. The camera goes down. That should be the end of our actress here. We'll end up losing out on that battle zone. Superior, Aina, and Frankie Doodle. No flame taking the second set of the battle zone for themselves after missing out on the first one. And it seems like, unfortunately, for Team Equal, please, we'll end up missing out on both of the battle zones for game number three. Backline, frontline, why decide when you can just be Sylvia and be both? You know what I mean? Do you yep. need do you need somebody to engage for you? That's fine. Play Sylvia. If you need a backline healer? Play Sylvia. Do you need somebody that can also dish out damage from mid-range? Play Sylvia. It doesn't matter. The literal jack of all trades. They can somehow do all of the trades just as good as other people can. That is disgusting. She has catch. She has chase. She has healing. What more do you need, Chuby? Bring out the uh, copy pastas of like literally everything in the game, right? Just every archetype. <laughs> it's too long. I can't even remember. I can't even memorize the whole thing because of how much there is. But that's literally what Sylvia is right now at Rogue this point. Paladin, oh, Warlock. Playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the whole nine yards. But yeah, actually, man, great pickup there. Of course, I believe. I think that did they get the Cladog ring off of that. I believe that was what they actually ended up getting. I yeah, it is. I actually see it now. Um. They did end up getting that Kladar ring for Frankie. The shields will be coming out as always. Now, let's see. We have about a little bit over a minute until wait. Oh, hello. Meek actually <laughs> just spotting out Gapasaurus there. But oh my goodness, Poisson taking so much damage there. There's the lovely totem activation there. Meek trying to actually heal for Poisson right now to try and get some of that healing, which they will be able to. Roy getting chased down by Meek. Poisson is back right now. Deus is down, of course. Roy down two now. Galzor 1v3 scenario, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Oh. And that's Gapasaurus getting taken down by the Rizzlers themselves. Team Riz. Man, this is not good for Team Gapasaurus. They had such a good early game trying to knock down a couple of these guys, even getting the first battle zone over Team No Flame, but they're not able to transition that into a victory or even towards the late game portion of their game right now. Managing to secure four kills for themselves is not bad, but a lot of them were inside of the battle zone, which are not going to count here in the long run. So a brutal end there for Team Gapasaurus. But again, it's more time for them to reorganize. They got to start talking about what their plan is in games four and five. Because if they continue with this team, which is actually working for the most part, I think they just need a little bit more communication. These fights are a little bit too split apart for these teams to operate correctly. The Sentinel not really seeing that much usage here either from that fight. Unfortunate there for them. But of course, in classic fashion, we do have no flame picking up Wick. Not many people nearby to end up taking it. Uzingi Girl's not going to take it. Riz not going to be able to take it either. That is the next four and a half minutes going to be dominated by Wick. Oh, man. And these last four teams here, Shuvi, it's close. All of these teams have kills. The transitions are coming online for all of them. This is some of the best action we've seen in a while. Yeah, and again, you know, you might say best action, but this is like textbook by all these guys. They're actually fighting according to how their teams actually want to fight, which is even more surprising, right? Like this is the amount of uh, coolness that we're seeing because I can't, I can't think of words. I, I can't speak English. <laughs> coolness is the words I'll go with. Uh, textbook fights are usually not supposed to be cool because we see them all the time, but these guys are making it look cool. So cool things for us. We're winners in, in the end. You know, these guys it's might Riz. be playing here, but uh, yeah, it's Riz, you know, it's it's you and I as casters winning, the observers are winning, the admins are winning, the chats are winning, because we get to watch all this happen in real time, as these guys have to suffer through these games. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we just get to sit here and watch them, you know what I mean? We've watched <laughs> an insane amount of Eternal Return over the last, uh, like, three months, I mean, over the last, like, two years in general, we've watched so much ER, you know, I could, I feel like I could just 
cast it with my eyes closed at this point, just kind of guess. I could sit here and be like, oh, wait, Frankie killed somebody? Oh, oh, he's on Sylvia? No way. You know, I could just... <laughs> I feel like we could do that at that point. Maybe that'd be fun, do a blind cast one day, just try and see what's happening based on sound. But Oh, there we go. Esther with a huge grappling whip there. Oh. Pull Ezu in. Gets finished off by the ultimate from me. Soul Link is definitely pop from Sakamata, but is it going to be enough? The Sonic Carolina 1v1 with Drowning Kids might need a little bit of help with that one. But wow, Esther with these whip skills today. Who is this guy? Man, this man is putting on his uh, G Work cosplay right now. He's landing every single one of these dash ins with the grappling whip. And oh my god, Esther is setting up so much. And, you know, even without the knockup on Passant's side, all he has to do is just land the blue and then link it up immediately with the yellow. There's not that many answers to anything else after that. So, beautiful combination coming out there from Passant as well as Esther. This is also going to be Drowning Kittens fully eliminated here, too. So, only three teams remaining as we start going into the eve of game number three here. Three full teams left. It's going to be Team No Flame as well as Team, let's see here, it's going to be Oozing E-Girls as well as Team Riz. They have a lot of opportunity still left in this game, even if we are on Day 4. Credit still being built for these guys. Map is going to be relatively open, considering there's only three teams compared to the five or six that we've seen so far at the stage in the game. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Potential Forest Final Zone for you too. <laughs> oh, of course, you know me. The Forest Final Zone lore I need it right now. 50 seconds until we find out. These three teams, it's going to be close. I, it, This is going to be a close one, Shuvi. It's going to be fun, though. I'm looking forward to it. We have a lot of our teams in Forest. Well, I mean, two-thirds of them, technically. <laughs> Over here in Forest right now. Oh, Riz and Oozing E-Girls. Are we actually going to see Esther with a huge pick again, possibly? Another insane whip. He is fully transitioned in everything. Oh, or just about, actually. My apologies. I thought he had a different headpiece on. But he just needs a, just a little bit more, Shuvi. And is it going to be Oozing E-Girls that actually gives him that headpiece? Hold on. Let's find out. I can tell he's looking for something. You can feel he's it. He is cooking. Close, definitely. He's cooking. Hold on. Is he going to be able to find it? Doesn't oh. actually. He goes a little <laughs> bit wide there. Okay. Actually, Nico going to get rooted down. But now it looks like they're going to be retreating right now. Just kind of wait for that, uh, that pick potential again. Something I found really funny throughout the whole course of that is the fact that Passan actually held onto his blue the entire duration of that. Mm -hmm. So, and as soon as Esther tried using the grappling whip, that's right when he changed over to the blue to try to set things up. So, their game plan is very simple, but it's straightforward. That's pretty huge. No three man wow. room coming down from Passan. That's not what you want to see. You've been dodging so oh, many things so well, but no. Passan just comes in around the corner oh, and says, "Absolutely God. no." Oozing Eagles obliterated by the hands of the painter Passant. Back with the Tia in season eight. No more Adela. No more Adela. Get 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 it away. <laughs> Only Tia. What in the name of the Lord was that? Oh my that reaction. I know. I'm, I'm excited. I got it on my monitor. You guys are, you know, we're, we're, we're three minutes in the future, you know? Oh, oh my goodness. Hello, three minutes in the past. Us and everybody else out there are three. I don't know, technically. Be one no, I'm minute. Saying, I don't remember what it is. Hey, you guys are in the One future. minute, three minute. Sure, Take same it. thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, guys. But, um, of course, and now it is one on one, Shuvi. I'm actually going to laugh if they don't even go this way, if they end up opting to go upwards. Oh, dude, this is so <laughs> unfortunate too, man. I mean, like, look at where they are, right? All the information is on the side of Frankie Doodle's team at the moment. No Flame has vision. If they go towards the top side of that area, they should be able to know. The CCTV goes down. There's absolutely no information on them in this area. Double guillotine will hit them. Oh, this is not looking good. Oh, good dodges, though, from everybody. Nice. This is at least good. They know that everyone's here right now. Esther, Meek, and Passant. They're looking to go towards the other entry, but that's also really bad, too, because they got to start walking in to a very enclosed area up against these three characters. That's not good. Finish line in and of itself will perma-slow these guys to oblivion. But hopefully, we can see something happening here. No corner checks coming down from Team uh -oh. No Flame this time around. So Passant can't really get an easy three-man knockup and a root like that. So we'll see what ends up happening here. Double guillotine already going down zone control going down as well hatchets being called we know exactly where that is going into yeah now let's see esther what are you gonna try and do superior always gonna try and hunt for that little stun just to have an engage there this is gonna be such a close fight here does get rooted down but that shield from sue is gonna be able to block so much damage and now it looks like they're just trying to get some of these traps out right now 
All the teams, they're trying. This is just a war of attrition right now. Trying to take space from each other. Oh, Wester not able to find the pick, unfortunately. That would have been beautiful, especially if it was on to Frankie. That's who they really, I feel like, need to worry about more than anything in this fight. I know they have some form of anti-heal on them, so it's not that big of a deal. Want to get this bear down as well, just so we don't have any little third-party scenarios coming in from that bear trying to stun up everybody. But Shuvi, this is going to be a close one. Oh, uh, losing ground though is going to be Team No Flame. They're slowly but surely being pushed back from all of these Tia yellow paints right now. The blue paint is down. I think that was a flash, but that's an awkward uh, ultimate there from oh. Esther trying to split up a lot of these fights. It is going to be that full rainbow with really good coup de gras going down onto multiple people at once right now. Down. Superior is trying to stay alive, but Anod is already down. That means Frankie can't heal that player up anymore. The health bars on the side of uh, Team Riz looking very healthy for them. Again, making their way back from game number two is going to be this team. Their wow. kill count looking absolutely amazing. Anod is fully down and out. Frankie Doodle and Superior the last two standing martyrs of his team. The grappling whip is going to land onto Sylvia. Oh, it's not looking it's good. Superior done. is absolutely not Nothing left in his arsenal. Team Riz, the change up into the Tia 4 Passan is the answer there. They will take away game wow. number three. 14 kills overall. Absolutely amazing. Just wow. What a game. Zero to hero, Shuvi. That was crazy. From sixth place in game two to first place in game three. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, Shuvi. What a fantastic showing there by Team Riz. That was incredible. All of the plays from Forest to Temple, it just doesn't matter. That was disgusting by them. Fantastic. We said textbook, and that's what they came here to do. The fundamentals getting a shown off from Meek, Esther, and Passant. Fantastic job done, gentlemen. I mean, you have to say, man, that change up from the Adela over onto the Tia seeming to be the answer. Just I, yeah. everything clicking in the mindset of Team Riz. As soon as that Tia comes through, they know exactly what they're playing off of. The yellow paint as well as the blue paint just pressurizing so many of these teams. I mean, you don't usually see Team No Fling losing ground literally anywhere as soon as yeah. all those traps are coming down but they're so scared of that yellow and blue paint combination from Passan, who we know can land very important ones at the correct time yeah. even that full rainbow was an amazing one down on the ground too to split up the entirety of team no flame isolate the fiora and lock him down until he is dead too just wow yeah, that's exactly. all we can do, right? Just the little claps from us. Exactly. Great job there by Team Riz, guys. That was insane. Oh my goodness. But guys, we need a little bit of a break after those three games. We're going to be sending it over for a 10-minute break. You guys stand up, get some rest and everything, get some drinks, get some snacks. We're going to show the scores and everything once we get back. Give everybody a little bit of time to recuperate from an insane game. And we'll see you guys back here in 10 minutes.
Invincible. Hello, everybody, and once again, welcome back from our small little intermission there to the Season 8 Lumia Marathon Finals for North America. I still think I'm Circadia, possibly for today, joined alongside by my work husband and fellow caster, Mr. Shuvi Senpai. Welcome back, Shuvi, from our break. How are you feeling, brother? Feeling pretty good. I got the lights on. I'm ready to cast again as well. It's starting to turn a little bit dark outside, so I can't rely on the <laughs> illumination of the sun anymore, but I'm feeling good. Game three was an absolute blast. I think you guys will be absolutely amazed the moment we see the scoreboard as well. Oh, yeah. But we have two more games left of the season finals for North America. All of their hard work, all these six teams' hard works comes down to these last two games and has been an amazing ride with these guys. Two more games yeah. left for season eight. Yeah, it's going to be culminating into all this. Two more games, guys. We've really got to get hyped for these Players are going to be on the edge of their seats, and so should you. But for right now, let's actually take it over to our scoreboard after game three, of course, not getting to take a look at it before the intermission. In first place still, we have no flame. And coming in second, Riz right now, coming all the way up from almost last place, Shuvi. Can you believe that? With third place also going over to Oozing E-Girls. Fourth place is Haya Papaya. Fifth, Ikuyo, please. And in sixth is Gaposaurus. Only six points. Riz needs to catch up to first place. That is insanity. After coming back and having such an explosive game, number three, can they keep the magic going? 
Yeah, it's absolutely bonkers. I mean, like, you take a look at the scoreboard here, you can see that the first two games that was had, sixth place, sixth place, they got dead last in both of those games. Four kills on one, one on the other. They died night one in that second game, too. They completely turned it around. It seems like, again, as I mentioned before the intermission here, that Tia pick change up click right inside their head going straight into first place 14 kills all of their kills outside of the battle zones that is an immense game coming down from team riz but you can see that these scoreboards are not rigid at all it can still swap around yeah. for these guys two more games like we talked about how they're running out of time but each of those games are really going to matter for all of them. So hopefully, games four and five, all these guys had enough time to talk with one another during the intermission. And hopefully, they should have a plan going into them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It is crazy, man. I know we have to hype up Riz as much as possible, but it can't be understated what they just did did wow. coming up like that started from the bottom now they are here shuvi i am looking forward to seeing as i said if they're able to keep that magic going in games four and five maybe they'll stick with the tia which you know i i think any smart person after having a game oh, like yeah. that <laughs> you would stick with the tia but let's see what they're going to be able to do outside of that of course they still have that yuki and laura esther also has to be praised for those whips, able to just grab people and bring them right into the loving arms of Meek and Passan. And Meek still having great ultimates there as well, has to be talked about as well. Team Riz Band just looking wonderful. But Shuvi, no flame is their competition right now sitting there in first place only six points ahead. Does no flame possibly have this game in the bag as well? I have absolutely no clue, man. If we've seen anything from games two and three, it's that other teams have found them out. And the funny yeah. thing is, it's not just one team that has figured out how to try fighting up against them. It's actually a lot of these teams. We saw that, you know, especially up towards Temple after Team No Flame had a huge advantage going into that fight, especially when it came to positioning wise. Team Riz still had answers for them. Tia is still very char a scary character, especially as soon as you get hit by those yellow uh, paint. And we know that teams aren't going to single handedly stand inside of it. So you got to either pull the trigger and just yeah. go, or you got to back away and give them space. Sometimes backing away and giving them space means that you lose ground, especially in season eight, where losing ground means so, so much detrimentally to your team. I don't know, man. Team No Flame, they got to do a lot more things like pulling the trigger, I feel like. Yeah, they did have a little bit of a rough game three there. We did see them kind of not really get the early game that they wanted. Lost the pawn battle zone. I believe that was to Gaposaurus, if I'm not yep. mistaken. And then actually not able to get the alpha that they wanted up in archery either. Two big blows to their tempo there early. But hold on. Let me actually talk about the lobby real fast. Because Drowning Kitten's possibly going to be... Oh, on the Bianca. Okay. Oh. I'm looking forward to that Bianca. I feel like we haven't been seeing enough of her. Oh, I'm so happy about this. It's Drowning Kittens on the Bianca 2. One of, if not, I think one of my favorites, uh, favorite Biancas in North America. Whenever Drowning Kittens pulls this pick out, you can expect to see something pretty good. And you combine it on top with Sakamata as well as Dezu, both on their characters as well, the Irem and the Chloe. This should be an easy way for Drowning Kittens to get a lot of crowd control down. Funny enough, uh, we're going to be seeing a swap up from the Elena over onto Drowning Kittens going onto the Bianca here instead. So we're going there from uh, you know a little bit of a big aoe circle of freeze into a big aoe circle of ground and blood <laughs> yeah i'm excited for it honestly i think that's a great switch up and it's going to be the frailty bianca as well no vampire or anything for her but that is completely understandable but the rest of these teams looking exactly the same here we always talk about fundamentals and these teams are really gonna have to show it off to us here um, other than No Flame and Riz, uh, who are you keeping your eye on this game? I think the team that I'm specifically looking out for right now is going to be Team Haya Papaya because we saw the potential that these guys really have when it comes to the mid to late game fights. It's just game number three was not it, but we've seen what happens to teams that really just was not it for the game before, especially with Team Riz. So Haya Papaya, the one that I'm looking at right now, Caustic, uh, Caustic Mactel and Triss have a lot to prove to us, especially with this Leon on Triss at the moment, running Glove here instead of the Tomfa, especially in a day and age where...
you're looking to just consistently shield your Jenny, he will be opting to go for the glove here instead. So I got it. I'm expecting a lot more here from Triss right now. He's looking for much more angles. We saw the amazing three-man surfs up earlier from him as well to set up Caustic into a beautiful fight into No Flame. They just have to be able to finish some of these games out. Sometimes, you know, you make me forget that Leon has taunt. So some days I do I, know, I right? do be forgetting. Yeah, you know, I'm like, glove. What are you talking about? Of course he's going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I was Funny like, enough, there's actually been more people running Tomfa Leon in team modes, if I remember correctly. And then they slowly started nerfing that thing, which is mind boggling to me because we haven't really seen it that often. But it, it is a thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them. I think uh, it. I think it's because they nerfed, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think they nerfed the shielding power on yeah. it, if, I, if I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was the uh, actual percentage there, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. But I think they've honestly, I, I still like it. I think it's a great pickup. Uh, but, of course, they will be, as you said, opting for the glove here. Not surprised at all. You know, you talked about them a little bit, but I'm going to talk about oozing e-girls just not having the game that they wanted last time oh, either. Sorry. Especially after a dominant game one performance. We're sitting right there, I believe, in first... I mean, it was first or second place. I'm sorry. I have mm -hmm. to take it back a little bit. But I still think they are looking fantastic. Lily able to just do so much on that Aya. Yeah, I think at this point, um, also it's a lot of other teams again adjusting to how other teams are going to play. Lulipato just has not had that open of a front line to hold everybody back. There's always somebody that gets straight through both, uh, what is it, Uzma as well as Nobody Kusushi. And at that point, it's pretty problematic for everybody else. Kaustic trying to fight it out up against Passan, but his teammate is joining in. Meek, Meek, you're just not giving an opportunity at all here for Kaustic. We'll get taken down, down oh over God. and beach. Standard Yuki in beach at this late in night uh, in day number one just coming in supporting his teammate will be able to knock down Kalsic. Am I crazy or like did you notice how fast it looked for Meek when he went through the speed gate and also <laughs> used his death? It looked like he literally just like like shunpoed behind him or something I was like oh my <laughs> god I was like he literally that was crazy. But yeah Kalsic gonna be our first to fall here in game number four. And Shubi, time is ticking. The clock is ticking. He seems going to be able to do it. Objectives being contested right now, right? Yeah. Night number one. People are hanging around here. Meek's looking for an angle. Passan is trying to do something, but Roy's not the type of player. This is the guy that Aldor. just pulls the trigger, and he finds that angle inside of Passan. Passan's not going to be able to survive here. Diamond Shard is going to be enough right before he dies, though he does end up getting the full rainbow off. Esther trying to poke down Mizro as much as possible, but we do have Deus hanging around here as well. It seems like the Tree of Life, for the first time in all of our games here tonight, going over towards Team Gapasaur. They will be able to pick that up and let's see what they do in the building with this because yeah, I just don't I just really didn't expect them to actually get it here at this stage Yeah, but now superior is here as well kind of feeling out what's going on No, the rest of no flame behind them a not getting a perfect hyperloop in there now Frankie I believe might pull the trigger Roy having to do something here very nice suture, but they're actually just gonna leave Roy. <laughs> They're gonna leave them out to try Oh, Esther's actually coming back ah. as well. Oh, hold on. Wait, is this actually going to be the angle they were looking for? Passant trying to get something in right now. Anot falling down to half health. Wait, Meek here? Oh, no, wait, Meek's there. I didn't actually see him there. I was like, Meek here? Hold on. Wait, they're actually looking for a pick. Is Anot actually about to fall? Oh. He is. Now Frankie has to get out with the bike. I don't know how I didn't see Meek here for a second. I'm fine. Drowning Kitten's also killing Kalsic elsewhere on the map. But yeah, very nice pick there by the Rizzlers themselves. This is absolutely all over the place right now. I mean, look at how this map is situated. We have everybody trying to run away from one another, and it leads to everybody just running into each other instead. And it seems like Superior also being found out here as well. Team Riz trying to get as many points as possible as they can, but you can see Triss and Mactel hanging around the outside. Superior uh -oh. should get taken out here. Yes, they do, but Meek's also going to get taken down here in subsequent fashion. Basan, you need to run there, buddy. Yeah, don't risk this just by standing inside of that bush. Esther going inside of Doc as well. Basan getting taken down pretty low for range is going to be good, but Esther needs to completely book it. He's going to get out of there himself as well. So full skill retreat for Team Riz. Just meek down on the ground for now with the speed gates. Everybody else theoretically should be fine too. That is still a very nice pickup. Riz already on four kills. That means actually with the kills, I know they surpassed. They're in the driver's seat right now. That's first place for them. And now Esther in a little bit of a pickle there as I don't think he can take on all of No Flame by himself. 
Yeah, not at all. It was a good attempt there. It was a pretty nice uh, Twilight Heist coming through for him as well, but just a little bit too tanky, especially with the Sylvia hanging around there healing up. You can't single-handedly take down all that effective HP for those guys, so unfortunate end there for Esther. But again, Meek is back up on the line. Passant managed to stay alive too, so this is a pretty good uh, result, I would say, for Team Riz, considering how nope. troublesome of a situation they were in. Although, I don't know if that's where Superior maybe wants to be, but a beautiful shield makes it so that the stun from the Yuki actually does not go through. The health bar is on both teams actually looking somewhat equal at this point, but we do see that the Yuki is pretty low when it comes to the health bar. They're going to make a full-scale retreat as they do not have ways to sustain themselves. Superior still looking for angles. I mean, he's still thinking about going in on this one because he knows how isolated he can make each individual one of these players. Frankie Doodle also trying to chase, but the, what the heck was that? The, <laughs> that was like super delayed for the red yeah. uh, the red carpet onto the Fiora, but I think for the most part, it will be a successful escape unless Frankie still wants to try for this. That's crazy, man. They're actually going to be chasing. You notice how much oh. fuel Frankie gets back. Just look at that. Oh. He gets his entire fuel gauge back just by existing. What? Oh my god. Went from zero to a hundred just real quick. That was insane. Oh my god, that fuel bar. Neuron, maybe we need to take a look at that one again. <laughs> exactly, but... <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> oh, Max Oh, this could be found out in the bush by oozing e-girls, actually. I believe they're gonna be chasing him. We can see the little kitty actually going after Maxall right now. There's that DS skill gonna be able to get Maxall out of there possibly. Leap pedal, those autos, whoa, they chunk. No flame is right below them as well. Maybe we have a, actually it looks like another fight's going on. Passant's down somewhere. Hold on. Now they're getting chased by Sakamata. Hold on, Ikio, please, but guess what? We also have Gapasaurus here. Circulation for Drowning Kittens to go in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shoot me, this is not good. Actually, we might. Yeah, clean pick up there by Roy on Aster. And Meek's just going to have to get out of there. Wow, I wonder what happened. Uh-oh, but hold on. Wait, oh, we're not okay. done yet. Yeah, we're not done yet. Hold on. Big Reign of the Vampire Queen out there from the Bianca. Deus is going to be still alive right now, though. They're just trying to take down Esther's body. Sakamoto looks like trying to get some autos in. Stack up that trend a little bit. Dezu going over the wall. But it looks like everybody's just going to be retreating for right now. Kind of recuperate. Uh, gather themselves. This is uh, looking quite interesting, I think, for most of our players here right now because there's no full team that's been eliminated yet. I feel like this is one of our slower paced games out of the four games that we've had so far. Esther will fall, of course, but he's going to resurrect here. That's a really oh. nice blink cartridge. Oh, that's not looking really good for Anal right now. The parry actually is pretty good to get him out of that fight. The health bars on Niko Niko Sushi as well as Lily Petal looking pretty dangerous. Those cameras inside the bushes may be finding a little bit of an angle for them to try to get a little bit more space for Lily Petal to resurrect up. Niko Niko Sushi will do the exact same thing. A not doing the same thing as well. It's going to be a full fight reset and the meteorite seeming to be going over on the side of Team No Flame as Vision looking still pretty bright on the side of uh, Team Uzi and E-Girls. The meteorite has been picked up though. They are they got what they came here for. The charm is pretty good but Uzma has to fully back away there. Lily Petal sitting in the middle of nowhere. You don't have a front line. You get taken out as that Aya will get fully eliminated as Niko Niko Sushi getting chased down here by Frankie Doodle. They want to go for this though. Going straight into Avenue you, Niko Niko Sushi will just say nope and get on out of there. That was crazy. Oh no, Pasana is just gonna get a pick on the Drowning Kins as well right now. No knock up to get them out of the coffin, but there's the silence and everything. That is Drowning Kins going down like it was nothing. Woo! Man, kills everybody. These last two games, Shuvi, it looks like everybody just wants just death, mayhem, murder, destruction. Mayhem that could possibly also be red, you know? Oh, like, I, 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 <laughs> no, but of course. Oh man, I don't even know. They, they are just going, they're bloodthirsty. That meteorite fight was insane. We also have our battle zones coming up in 20 seconds. I believe it's Forest and Alley, if I'm not mistaken. We can see there on the lovely map. And look at these transitions for people. Frankie already on the Altair. A not gonna be on the Almas as well. Uzma with that frost pedal, just so many upgrades coming in. And now it looks like here we go with our alley battle zone just about to start up here in five seconds. Shuttles are spawning. No flame looking for these kills. Oh boy, Shuvi, here we go. Can Equio please turn it around this time around? I don't think I've really seen them ever having a successful fight up against Team No Flame so far, but maybe this is their area where they do end up doing it because this could be a very detrimental moment for Team No Flame if they don't end up winning this battle. So remember, the Clodogring has been so pivotal in making sure that this team is able to sustain themselves all the way till the end here. Oh, Drowning Kids is actually going to be completely denied there. A beautiful flash from Aena to deny that. He does end up eating a shot from the Reign of the Vampire Queen, but it doesn't matter. Bianca's kid is all done. 
done and done at that point. Sakamoto trying to put down as much damage as possible. You can see the shield coming through for them as well. But this Irem is just not able to sustain at all for themselves. Anot's going to actually get knocked down there from Sakamoto. Soul Link is over, however. It is going to be a done fight there for Team No Flame. They will be able to once again triumph over Team Equio, please. A brutal end there for those guys. But that just means that they're going to resurrect here in day number three. Should be able to at least get a couple more fights in. The last hurrah coming in for that team in game number four. That's the one unfortunate thing about Bianca, especially into a team like No Flame. Uh, once you have the ult at everything, uh, you realize slowly the superior block 90% of the damage and that Frankie is still healing him anyway. So you're like, yeah. huh, well, might not be the uh, best thing I was looking for out there. But yeah, that is a nice pickup there. We do have Riz walking in here. They spot Frankie, A not as well, I believe. Superior, they get a camera down. They do see all of them. Yellow Paint not able to land, unfortunately. Gonna be waiting for it again. You can see how scared they are of the blue yellow combo, though. Look at uh -oh. how split apart everyone yeah, is. Gapasaurus is there around the wall as well. Are we actually oh. gonna see some? Oh, they're just chasing. What is that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, yeah. Now they're able to walk at least into the force battle zone. Of course, haven't won it. But it's right around the corner. Gapasaurus is sitting there. Oh my god. They don't even know. That is hilarious. What is going on? <laughs> Uh, this is actually looking, I think, a little bit difficult for Team No Flame right now because they have to walk down towards that area unless they want to hyper loop out. They're going to have to eat timer a little bit regardless, I feel like, at this point, unless uh, they're able to just take that item and straight up go. But you can see the amount of vision that these teams have right now. I mean, our Observer doing absolutely amazing at the moment, giving us a little bit of that suspense for you and I, although, yeah, at yeah. least for me, I'm in the game itself, so it doesn't matter on my end, but the suspense for all these teams, just knowing what they know, and that is going to be it. We don't have full vision of those guys during these small moments that we're only seeing team vision i mean you can see how much of time they're really being given to react to this and it's not that much yeah not that much at all let's see if they do spot out that camera that's in the bush not much coming out of it right now though wick is up she will be in avenue uh oh frankie fighting oozing the e-girls right now there's nico trying to go in she's not going to be able to find much just yet Bouncy balls going on every which way there for Nico. It's the finish line. There's the knock up on the Anod, but it's going to be superior going back in in return. Uzma trying to knock him into wall with the ultimate. Oh, and, oh unfortunately, Nico does go down. There's Lily Petal about to fall as well. That blank ah. cartridge ultimate not going to be able to help you. And unfortunately, they just get dismantled by no flame. Wow, that is just a. Look at this. They barely even took any damage either. It's more Anod than anybody. But now another fun. Esther's actually down thanks to Deus. What happened over here? Meek trying to rest up in the corner right now. Deus just about to fall down. Roy is here too. Meek's coming back into the fight. Great skill uh, of the bat there. I you know, I was trying to say bat skill, but of the bat I think is fine. It's a 2v2 here. Passant needs to rest up right oh. now. Is me oh, what's going to happen here? Oh, the third party. Oh, Guess no. what? No flames here. Passant has to res Esther and they have to get the hell out of there right now. Oh, how unfortunate. You hate to see it, Shuvi. Let's keep eye on that. Oh, God, and now No Flames is in such a good standing here over literally everybody else. So many advantages going over onto them at the moment. Wick is still not even dead yet. So the amount of opportunities that this team has, they're running straight towards that objective right now. It is looking tougher and tougher as the game goes. We're still seeing people trying to res people as much as they can. Silence is going to be Gallows, where he's still down on the ground. Wick is still already done and dusted too. Esther getting taken down very dangerously low. Does Deus want to stick onto the resurrection? It does seem like that is the case. Passant has no way of stopping this anymore. He doesn't have a knockup anymore. And that means Galzer will be picked up as all the Wickling going to be taken here by Team No Flame yet again. They get a tree of life on top of it. So best of both worlds. All the transition items yet again coming through for these guys. That blood sample is going to be huge. That tree of life will be massive for these two. Yeah, and it looked like Riz was doing there, good, uh, doing good there for a while in this game, but unfortunately, no flame. I guess that intermission really just woke them up. They are sitting on ten kills right now. Absolutely disgusting. And now we may have another fight down here in Doc. Michael trying to go in, has to use the stasis and everything. There's a big ultimate from the Bianca. Uses their own stasis as well. Everybody has totem. I swear to God, it just looks like it. 
Galstick trying to get as much damage out onto that coffined up Bianca as possible. Maktal also going to fall meanwhile. Oh. There's the play dead, forced out from Jenny. But I don't think anybody can deal with this. This might be Desu going down. It will not. And it looks like Aya Papaya able to take this fight here down and dog. Oh, wait, Desu. Oh, no. That, oh, God. Wait, what is happening? Desu actually falling down the Triss. And Maktal actually almost at full health. So, unfortunately, that is the end of Ikuyo please here in game four. What a brutal end, and you know what? It was a good attempt there from Sakamata as well as Dezu trying to turn it around. They had no timer inside of Factory, so they had to go back in regardless of the situation. They tried to make the most of uh, the best of it, got one single kill, but ended up getting taken out regardless. So a good attempt there from those guys, and now it's going to be No Flame yet again trying to chase these people down. They have the Wick buff, Passant trying to run away here as well, but now they have absolutely nowhere else to run. Beach is the only spot left, and they all have to eat timer. This is not looking good for Esther or Passant at this oh, point. No. And you can try to maintain as much utility as possible, but look who is waiting for him right at the edge here. Does he know? Not yet, but I don't think anyone on the side of Team Gapsaurus <laughs> knows either. They're looking for angles, but they're actually oh, going to find Frankie instead. Oh my god, oh, now they just saw it for a moment, right? Like, I no, saw I it for a second? Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a vision bug. I don't know. Oh, no, oh. they actually don't see him. Oh my god, they don't see him. <laughs> just That's so true, no. <laughs> Esther knows. He's hearing footsteps all over the place right now. He's saying, why am I still alive? Nobody saw Esther there. Oh my god. That is crazy. Just barely at the edge oh, of no. every... Six people didn't see Esther. Oh no! They're coming! Run! Oh, oh no, this is so... Oh, this is just awful. Galzor trying to go in, but I don't know if it's enough. There's the diamond shard as well. Roy's trying to do something. I don't know. Oh, no. Deus, everybody's gonna die. No, Deus, oh, they pop, and now Galzor is actually the last one left. And I already know what's about to happen. We're about to see the donut delivery girl herself. Where'd Esther go? But anyways, I love it. Es Esther. No passants down as well. And it's just gonna be Esther. Oh wait, is Esther maybe gonna come in for a res possibly somewhere? No, I wanna wait. I actually didn't see what was on. I my thing lagged for a second. I said that, and then he instantly came on my screen at half level. And <laughs> oh no, that is unfortunate. That is the worst timing. I feel like I just spawned Esther into existence there. Unfortunate. But let's see, it's gonna be the battle of rats right now. Oh no. Let's keep an eye on them. Yes, battle of the rats, battle of the teams. The Titans two remaining alive right now. No flame, as well as team. Uh, what was that again? Oh my goodness, I keep forgetting team names. Haya Papaya. I talked about both of these teams, by the way, right before the intermission. Haya Papaya struggling a little bit in game number three. Seeming like they have a solid foundation here in game four, though. As uh, you know, beautiful transitions over onto Calstick. We do have Galazor still sitting on zero. Everybody else sitting pretty nicely as well. I mean, I'm checking the items on all of our players that are alive right now. So Superior sitting on 40% CDR with the Queen of Heart by himself. Mactel and Triss also sitting on wonderful transitions for themselves too. Like, it is very evenly matched. It all comes down to if Calstick can really start pumping out the damage over the course of time. And if he is able to, then maybe, maybe there is a world they are able to overtake this wicked up team right now. Beach is going to be the final zone too. This is going to be a struggle for all these guys. It's going to be hard. Can Calstick do it though? It's going to, like you said, it's going to be hard to honestly pump out all that damage i feel like they have so much dive shuvi it's crazy oh no poor esther oh no esther and gals you guys gotta get out of there they want esther though that twilight height is not gonna be able to do much for esther and unfortunately i believe that is fourth place for our friend there and that's gonna be third for gaposaurus as well maybe Unless there, there's a world in which Galazor lives here. That wait, why are they not just killing Galazor? What? That is time. <laughs> well, I guess so, but I mean, I know they have a lot more than, and they. Oh, it actually goes over to Haya Papaya. Wow. Okay. It's a nice kill for them, and I think for Team No Flame, they don't need to risk anything right now, right? I mean, look at the amount of kills that they have. 13 already very close to the performance that we saw coming out from uh, Team Riz there in game number 3. Now, I, we don't know how many are from the battle zones and how many are not. I'm thinking 10 outside of the field right now, just looking at right the now. scoreboard right yeah. there. Yep. 
So that's still a massive amount of points going over onto them. They have absolutely no reason to risk anything right now. They didn't want to agree to too much and lose too much time or be at a deficit on that specific resource. They will play safe. Completely understandable right now. Now let's see what ends up happening. 20 seconds left. Everybody's just kind of chilling out right now. I feel like one team maybe might move a little bit early just to be able to get that console. It is going to be high up papaya that ends up doing that. But actually, no play move second. All Superior's using a lot onto that bat. Calstick's trying to get the autos out right now. Frankie moving back to the temporary oh. zone. Superior actually having to use... Oh, God, that is insane. Oh. That's a huge acceptance speed. Here we go, let's see. Frankie ends up taking down Maktal. Calstick just not able to get that damage out. Triss is in the back right now. Play dead force, but this is no flames. A game finally, they take one Shuvi. Game number four belongs to them. Wow. Incredible game there for team no flame again 16 kills overall 13 outside of the battle zone That is a beautiful performance yeah. coming out from those guys and this pretty much almost almost I'm not gonna say anything more than that almost Guarantees them their season 8 final here for themselves an incredible game yeah. exactly when they needed it over some of the other teams right now that was a crazy game from them. Executed so well, I will say, towards the end. Doing everything that they needed to do properly, I will say. More than anything, I think that was just textbook, as we always say. I don't know what more you know you can really say about it. They act... They played their comp to perfection They like they always do. I know these guys, you know, Frankie Superior, and of course, a Not. they're just playing their characters to 110% more than anything. Frankie is just doing so much on this Sylvia. It feels like almost nobody can contest with it. If they get that little lead they need early to get the Kladaw ring, to get some totems online, it just feels impossible. Yeah, and the bigger problem here, I think, as well, is the fact that there's just so much on the side of Team No Flame to counter a lot of the things that Calstick wants to do. It looked like an it looked like a great acceptance speech, but right after the acceptance speech, like yeah. there's all the kinds of damage mitigation that Team No Flame has. We have the parry over on the side of Anod, who is also, by the way, as well. I will let you know this. We've been talking about this pretty recently, especially last night during ERM. Amp two-handed sword Fiora. So the outer yeah. rings of those spaces are hurting massively, especially over on the counts. They didn't have an angle back in after that uh, that acceptance speech too. So it's very tough right now for a lot of our teams and for No Flame. Again, they're winning this game with 13 kills on top of everybody else exactly at the time that they really needed to solidify their dominance and solidify the amount of points that they have going into our last game here. Only a best of five instead of a best of six that we are usually accustomed to when it comes to uh, finals like this. They're almost done it. They have almost done it. One more step. All they have to do is just take that one extra step and reach the finale, and they should have it. No Flame has done so much during Season 8. They just have to get that little bit done. They are so yeah. close to the end. And now let's actually, speaking of, take a look at our scores there after game number four. No Flame sitting on top, as you can see, oh with God. two 100 points coming out there. Shuvi, our first team so far in this tournament to hit over 200. Following up is Riz still, of course, with 142 points. Haya Papaya in third with 109. Oozing E-Girls in fourth with 93. Ikuyo please in fifth. And then, of course, Gaposaurus sitting in sixth place right now. Wow. This is going to be a... I said uphill battle before. This is climbing Mount Everest for Riz to be able to get the points needed to win this Shuvi. Can they do it? Is there a world in which they do it? There could be, man. I mean, we saw all kinds of shenanigans happening throughout the course of the evening here. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, I was so excited for this, right? People adjust, people learn. And we have yeah. come to the conclusion of season eight at North America, which is the season finals that we are watching right now. But this is the end. The last game is upon us. Very yeah. soon, we will be going into our final competitive game for North America when it comes to Nibble Neuron tournaments. 
it was a great ride. It's going to be amazing, I think, during Season 9 as well. Hopefully, they continue something like this because we have learned yeah. a lot when it comes to this style of tournament in North America. I think we can develop on it a lot more during Season 9. We had a ton of fun both organizing, casting, as well as watching a lot of the tournaments that happen for the community as well. Thank you again yeah. before we go into our last game. Yeah, big thanks to everybody out there in the community. TOs, casters, scorekeepers, organizers. If you play the game, maybe if you claimed an NP code or something, it don't matter. If you're just here for the drops, it don't matter. We appreciate all of you out there. And from myself, I speak maybe for you as well here in saying that I think the Season 8 Lumia Marathon was a success. It has just been fantastic here. Of course, like we said before, we still have Europe and the South American finals to do here. Uh, uh, tomorrow will be the European finals with next weekend giving us the South American finals, I believe, on the 18th. But it is just going so, so fantastically. And I hope you all are looking forward to the rest of the events we have for you. And like you said, hopefully Season 9 will bring us some more Eternal Return action as we get closer and closer to the release date of the game. Ha, oh, Shuvi. It's been, it's been a fun ride so far, hasn't it? It indeed has been, but all great things must come to an end. The final game of Season 8 is upon us for North America. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our final six teams as we go into the final character selection of Season 8 in North America. Oozing Eagle swapping it up completely. They are saying, let's go all out for game number five. All the other teams seeming to play something consistent, but then Drowning Kittens coming out here and says, not really, we're going to play hard. <laughs> I mean, I'm down for it. I like it. But man, Oozing Eagles, is, they're actually switching over. They're doing the Sua Sylvia. They're actually getting onto No Flames turf right now, Shuvi. Uh oh. This is going to be a fun one, I think. Here we go. Oh. What is Uzma's plan? What is Uzma's plan? Does he have a certain idea going into this? Because he does have at least have Lily Petal sitting on the backside of things. We are going to see Red Sprite from her as well as the bow. So we know directly that she's already planning on going for the amplification gameplay style here. Trying to poke people out. It's been a long time since we've seen American Sniper Lily Petal come back. But maybe that is what they need to try to topple some of our teams here in the top two. And for those players... They have worked so hard again in the previous couple of seasons, I will have to say, kind of diverting from the original gameplay style of Lily Petal, but we're making a full round back. We're going back to the beginning of the story here for Lily Petal to try to end Season 8 with an absolute bang. Let's see if they're able to do it. They're all on the default skins as well. You know, <laughs> I love it. Oh, man, that is horrible. But let's see if they're able to contest No Flame for what they want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our last game of the day, get hyped. It's going to be a fun one. I'm ready for it. We have had a fun day so far. Where is the time gone? I can't believe it's been two hours already, actually. My goodness. Or in this you case, know, I, I came, guess. Yeah. I keep the cast us like right after work. I'm not even tired anymore. I was dead exhausted after work. I don't care anymore. Did eternal return? Competitive? Yeah, well, give me another game. Okay, let's let's go game six, right? Surely, <laughs> surely we could just change that real fast. The whole it's like the uh, nine games. You know, maybe like the first. Surprise! Day. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's actually a nine game. It's like solos for your M. <laughs> oh man, let's just keep let's just keep playing all night. Oh Bye. yeah. As you said before, all great things must come to an end. And that we're going to have everybody crafting over here two minutes until night number one begins. But that means we have a little bit of time to reflect on this season, these players, the stories leading up to this. It's been fantastic. It really has been. So many of our teams have kind of set their arcs and set their sights on this from the beginning of the season. Of course, that is what's going to happen if you set a tournament like this and a big event like this too. And you know what? I will say, uh, considering how the season so far has gone, I honestly expected No Flame to be like the sole dominant team here. But 
kudos to the other teams again for finding answers to everybody else. You gotta give credit where credit is due for those guys. And it seems like game number five, starting out with a little bit of a rough start here for Passat. The massive slow is gonna be pretty solid, but Drowning Kittens, are you gonna be trying this right now? We do have a couple additional oh. people starting to spawn in, and as soon as <laughs> Beak sees that spawn, and he's saying, nope, get on out of here. I am sorry. You will die, but I will keep myself alive and be- Oh, no! no. Frankie got that it! Oh, you see. no! Oh my goodness, that is turbo unfortunate. <laughs> That is uh, not what you want to see if you're any of these other teams. Frankie taking the kill. Uh-oh. Shuvi, four more points on that leaderboard. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Gosh, dude, this sucks for all the other teams, man. They're trying to topple the throne that team No Flame has set up, not try to construct it even further for those guys, but that's what ends up happening here. If you are able to third party all the way in on that one, a little bit of trouble. Oh, maybe this was the plan all along. They're trying to actually one-up No Flame over in Temple right now. Maybe if they're able to knock somebody down, but Superior is just doing way too much damage. Uzma's trying to do whatever he can as well. Niko Niko Sushi gets taken down, and Uzma gets taken down as well. Lily Petal, the last one standing alive right now on the side of Team uh, Uzing E-Girls. Oh my god, you cannot one-top the uh, OG Sua of North yeah. America. <clears throat> Unfortunately, a little bit rough there for oozing e-girls having to get out of their passant also having to run through red right now burning a lot of timer hopefully he will be able to get it back at some point but oh man this is uh this is an interesting one so far but no flame already on three kills shuvi ay 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 all outside of battle zones too. That's an additional 12 yep. points going over to them. The point gap just furthering and furthering and furthering. Second place was sitting at like 140 something as well. So it's going to get even tougher for these guys in the next few minutes here. But, you know, we've seen some crazy things happen here tonight, sir. We've seen some weird things happening here. Who's to say that it cannot happen again or even better? Yet, one top the previous performance is coming out from some of our teams here too. So we still cannot give up any hope for all of our other teams. Just, we gotta be, again, pretty appreciative of how No Flame has managed to maneuver around these entire courses of games. Especially considering how much pressure they've been under. Especially with the amount of teams and players also supporting them in the background too. Yeah, no, completely agree. Oh no, please no. Not Passant. Not, not again. Not my son, Passant. At least the speed gift is love for him to be able to run ah! through these. Oh no, but Frankie, <laughs> we know how this goes, Shuvi. We've seen it before, and I believe this might be the end of Passant right now. He's trying! A healing! No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not there, not there. Oh, there's another person falling down. Meek's actually going to be able to knock down Lily Petal now. Esker's the last one staying alive on the side of uh, Team Riz for some reason. But multiple what third parties happening right now. Niko Niko Sushi is the first one to get taken down there as well. Sylvia falling down here over in school. Superior looking for more angles. He has all the targets to try to knock up. He's going to go straight into a wall instead as Nina trying to open up some areas. Oh, Drowning Kittens will end up popping that Peacemaker for himself. The SP is getting drained by literally everyone they on this literally line have the of Team ultimate no upgrade. It is the <laughs> ultimate upgrade. Frankie's gonna get taken down here. Superior and Anon on full Not scale again. retreat. Oh my god, but now they know. The now they SP. know they have a way to deal with that at all. Do they is the question. The SP drain hard, Superior. Oh, oh my god, sir. We're seeing it all again, man. We're seeing it all. It all just comes back around, doesn't it, Shuvi? Oh, yeah. I cannot believe we're actually seeing the SP drain build hard. I love it though. Uh oh, but this isn't uh, what you want to be seeing either. Unfortunately, Niko Niko Sushi, she will be going down here. Uh oh, but now Mac Tall and them trying to actually get after it. Unfortunately, our our one casualty will be Nina. The child will not be protected, unfortunately. I love how they're not fighting when they don't have the hard ultimate. <laughs> Can we make Nina also worth like half a point? Oh, but it'd be tough to drag that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish that's a character in and of herself, right? Like, oh, you see half points, but it's no. Hold oh. on, Lily Petal actually getting aggressed upon there. Hold on, I think that's the end of Lily Petal here right now. Up and alley, unfortunately, get picked out there by Gaposaurus. Their first kill of the game. 
More stuff happening though, down in uh, down in hotel, Esther's gonna get taken out, Meek Speedy and uh, Pisan was actually able to knock down a couple of these guys too, but again, Kyaustic trying to pick up their teammate, will get cancelled out even without the knockup from the uh, the Tia, they're still trying to do things, is actually gonna be the one that gets taken out here instead, Red Carpet is pretty nice, more movements be coming out from Kyaustic as well, but Meek is looking for the single, he desperately wants this, he wants to spring out of down any other contenders as much as possible, spring and Autumn not there for Meek at all yet, He's still trying to stay ch chase this Calstick, trying to build up whatever stacks they can, trying to keep themselves alive. Triss oh. needs to res now. Oh, no, Calstick gets out. Okay, Triss comes back up. Calstick has managed to save his teammates, and he will stay alive for now. Oh my god, Meek almost had it, but just didn't have the damage to knock down Calstick before dashing over the wall. That's not too bad, though, honestly. I think the play was to maybe keep them alive. I know they want to knock them out, but they need as many points as they allowed them to come back. They're just allowed to farm more points, you know what I mean? But oh, hold on. It's time for Gaposaurus to actually find out what's going on now. Shoot. Never mind. Oh, but unfortunately, the, the hard win. <laughs> you got me excited for a second. <laughs> I was excited too. You know, I was ready for it. But unfortunately, Art will go down. And it's up to the Kitty Cat to actually get out of there so their team can live. Sakamata Drowning Kids, unfortunately, going down. Oh, shoot. I was I was so looking forward to it too. To be fair, they lost because Hart didn't have a right? Definitely. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. definitely. <laughs> Exactly. But now it looks like a nice meteorite pick up here by No Flame. Being still on four kills right now. Are they going to be able to get more? Is going to be their next victim, Shuby? Don't know, but whoever it is, they got to try to find something. Otherwise, the game is set and done. The entire set is done and done. The entire season is done and done. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, No Flame is setting their arc to be one of the best uh -oh. teams in the world. And we've seen the results of solos as well. Although this, oh my god, A dot knows. A dot knows. He's being so careful. Oh my god, Superior no. knows too. Oh no A dot is at all. so good, man. Dude, this guy's game sense is absolutely bonkers. And funny enough, it's actually Gapasaurus that loses their patience and decides to go for it. Now they're oh, all of a sudden in a really bad spot right now. Oh, that's a lot of damage going down onto Superior. He's just barely managed to stay alive. Okay, good bio. Over onto Superior now. Anot in a little bit of trouble. Mies were trying to chase this down as much as possible, but Frankie Duel has got the call. You gotta stay alive, buddy. Runs away all the way to nowhere. Anot's gonna sacrifice his life to try to buy a little bit more time, and that is gonna be the call here. Good kills coming out from Gapasaurus, but I mean, wow, you gotta appreciate Anot, man. His game sense yeah. is absolutely insane. Yeah, Gapasaurus pulled the trigger. I thought that was actually gonna be the end for them, but able to take down No Flame. Oh man, A not down for just about the next 30 seconds. Frankie just sitting there in factory. That's a tree of life for them as well. Wow, great plays there. Honestly, I have to respect both teams for what yeah. they did. That was crazy from everyone involved. I find it so funny that it's Gapasaurus that lost their patience of a bush check of all things at that point. So, ah, what a what a weird transition of events in that stage. At least in the end, again, the gap still closes for everybody else against Team No Flame. They're looking for more angles right now. They want to try getting a couple more points to try to close that gap as often as they can. The question is, will they be able to? Especially now that we're starting to go into our day three phase, the final day of uh, uh, the final. Resurrections of game number five will be done. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. The battle zone resurrections are the only things that people have left at this point. Mizroy gonna get tagged up massively here. Cowstake in a little bit of trouble. No, he is not. It's gonna be Roy that gets taken out here first. Deus is done and dusted as well. Galazor tried to run away from everybody. He's not gonna have that much of an escape route for himself as Backtail tries Galazor. to chase this down. A couple more auto attacks should do it, but he's gonna eat the red timer. Mactel wants to try chasing this. He does have the spring and autumn. He's trying to run this down there. It is. The additional attack range will be enough. That Gapasaurus is going to be our first team eliminated here for game number five. A not as well as Superior running straight in towards all of these guys. The heart is going to get cancelled. The Peacemaker is no. gone. There's third party trying to happen everywhere. Uzma looking for an angle here too. But there, this is a battle zone. Remember, battle zone means that you got to try to knock down these players. Oh, the damage. As much as possible. Oh, this is not looking good for these guys. Dezu hiding inside of the bush. Sakamata is going to be down here as well. I rem trying to do whatever they can, but they're is also running out goodbye over onto that team down here 
Ikuyo please eliminated from the battle zone, but now it comes down to oozing E-Girls as well as no flame. A lot of damage done over onto Frankie. He can't resurrect himself either. No healing for himself when it comes down to the situation. Superior and Anon trying to do things. Does Uzma have what it takes to one-up the OG Sua, or is it going to be Superior and Anon just completely running over his own teammates? Niku Niku Sushi taking down about a quarter of their health. They're going to get taken down most likely. Anon just a couple more damage. Should be able to do it. Superior just barely lives. He gets the shield from the Sentinel. Lily Petal is going to get oh. taken down here too. The Clotter Green coming out Man. yet again for Team No Flame, and it just does not stop their tramp, their stampede over all these teams in Cemetery. It continues on as well. That was so unfortunate. Lily Petal walking right past Anot to try and get a kill on a oh. Superior, but I think they really needed to hit Anot there. I don't know. Yeah. That was a little rough from them coming out. Of course, they will come back because it was a battle zone, but. That kind of spells doom for the future in terms of if they're going to be able to fight them or not. It's just not working out, unfortunately. But meanwhile, the rest of these teams are trying to get strong as well. Man, I don't even know if there's... Uh, I don't even know if... Do you think Team Riz, are they actually... I don't think they can do it anymore with the amount of kills that No Flame has. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. Esther was looking for a pick there for a second. Not able to do it, but... God, Shuvi, this is nerve-wracking. Gosh, dude, this sucks, man. It's, All know. of our teams here, they're just looking. At this point, it might honestly be a contend for second place, but again, Team Riz still has a chance, right? As long as there's still plenty of teams and players remaining alive right now, of course, there's not that many resurrections that can happen, but still, they have a chance. They still have to keep the hope up that they can manage to take away whatever points are remaining in the lobby and transition that into a victory for themselves, too. But time is running out. Wiggleen has spawned slowly but surely walking her way, I think, in towards Chapel from the looks of it right now, which is really good. Team Riz needs this at the moment, and they do have the one up on this full information gauge inside of here as well. It is beginning. Because can see Team No Flame trying to jump onto this as well, but there's way too much distance being covered by yeah. them as well as Wickling. It's going to be a Wick cleanly going over on the side of Team Riz right now. Everybody's slowly but surely walking in. They now know that it's not worth it anymore. They will back away, try to reset their fight for another day. Yeah, and let's see what Riz is going to be able to do with that after this, because now they need to get hunting. They need to kill everybody, Shuvi, to have a chance. I quite literally think they need to kill the entire yeah. lobby and get first place. If they're able to, if somebody's able to knock out No Flame right now, it's them and they need to find them and do it now before it gets worse. Yeah, it's, they need to not even give them yeah. like points at this point too. That's the kind of unfortunate situation that you're placed under as Team Riz. But for the next five minutes, they have the assistance of that Wick buff, so they're going to be really strong going into the next momentary uh, fights here. Rester sitting on a couple of really nice transitions for himself. This Laura is going to be doing an incredible amount of damage. Passan needs to do pull his own weight as we have seen him do time and time again as well. Oh, goodness gracious. The next five minutes, man. The next five minutes of this game Matters. are going to be absolutely bonkers for you and I. Yeah, and let's see. We do see Uzma, Lily Petal, and Nika. Oh, they actually see Sakamata from around the corner. Wow. This is going to be a really close one. They actually can't. The problem is all these other fights are going to be breaking out. And unless these teams... Oh, man, this is going to be so close. This is actually... I, I, dude, I'd feel, like, nervous if I was Riz right now. I mean, I know myself. I, uh, dude, the anxiety would, oh, it would mess me up. But let's see if they're able to do it. I do see them down there walking into beach from uptown. Oh, man, all these teams are up in hotel as well. This is going to be the hunting grounds right now. They need to get up here and fast. Oh, I actually see you. They might fight Team 4 here in a second. Hold on. Esther's going to look for a pick. Possibly oh. not able to find Kaustic, but they still have a lot of damage, Shuvi. This is going to be possibly a big fight for them before Rainbow right. does catch out Kaustic. You see it go in as well. Oh. The coup de gras, Esther actually falls down. Meek has to go in right now. But oh no, Ikuyo, please, is coming in from the back, Shuvi. That is unfortunate. Good night to Team Riz, at least Esther for right now. But I think that is the hopes and dreams taken down, Shuvi. How unfortunate.
Oh man, you know what? It was a good lucid dream that they were dreaming for a little bit here and for Esther he will be placed in a permanent lucid dream himself in game number 5 as he's going to be taken out of uh, game number 5 here from unfortunately multiples of team just kind of scattered all over the place inside of Hotel and there's no flame starts to join them down here as well 20 seconds until we start seeing which one our final zone is here today Meek getting bullied, Passant getting bullied Mactel's going to try to chase this down as much as possible it's going to be it for Team Riz. They had a really good run here, a solid game number three performance, but that is going to be the memory that we will treasure them with. Good run for those guys. Yeah. Just not going to get taken down. Meek, the last one remaining alive. Placement points. It's still playing for second at this point because, you know, money is money, of course. I believe it's $300 for second place, so that's 100 dollars per person you know i i could i could work with that a little bit i need i need some of that money right now maybe you know we dip into the prize pool a little bit you know <laughs> just no, a tad bit yeah yeah like give me like four bucks you know just get like a, <laughs> oh just something like that but shuvi we have four teams left here a hotel final zone i feel like it's kind of uh you know fitting everybody's gonna be checking into the hotel Oh, Superior. Man, I don't know if Oozing E-Girls can actually even fight this team at all. Yeah, they have way too similar of compositions, and then Lily Petal's damage is very limited to the duration of her Wolf Assault, yeah. which is problematic because Anot's damage is really not that limited. We've seen Outer Rings of the Fenty doing so much damage on this amp version of the Two-Handed Sword, but here we go. Anot actually gets tagged up by the Charm here. There's the SP drain going through. The SP Drain coming through right now, but they have to back away. They can't fight this anymore. Anot trying to heal up as much as SP as possible, but look at this fight. The Flash has already been used here which means Anot's not going to have that available. The damage exchange is a little bit too much. Solink has already been popped. So it's getting a huge chunk of their damage. Not that much damage being done over onto the other players here instead. Sakamata dies. will most likely get taken out here as well. Frankie Doodle trying to run away to the best of his ability. Sakamata is down on the ground, but it doesn't matter Hiya at this point. The charm buys enough time for the resurrection to come through. Haya Papaya trying to deny this whatever much as possible. Frankie Doodle now stuck in a corner. Superior stuck in a corner here as well. Kaustic eating a huge chunk of damage. They're going to go straight into the play dead, but Superior is dead. Frank Doodle trying to run away here as well. Kalsi trying to chase this down. Full fuel on the side of Frank Doodle, so he'll be able to get himself away, but Team No Flame in absolute tatters as we go into the final zone of Patel. Yeah, they all need to get in there too right now, but so many people are still in beach. Frankie, the only one left from No Flame alive. Superior is, of course, going to sit down there and pop, possibly. Actually, no, Frankie, they're going to be able to res, no. I think. Oh, no. They get both of them. Literal zombie. Yo, Dezu. <laughs> Poor Dezu actually running oh around. Oh my god! They're actually able to get both of them back up. The timer from the final zone going all the way up to, I believe, 40 or 50 seconds for them allows them to get back in the game, Shuvi. Oh. They're not done yet. Oh my god. Oh, the damage from the bullseye. Oh, dude, what is going on, Shuvi? This is insanity. I can't believe This is, oh, no. Haya Papaya needs a way to walk in onto Oozing E-Girls right now. Dezu is just going to go for the Hail Mary play. I don't blame them at all, but yeah, it's Dezu going down, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but look at the timer, man. Haya Papaya, they're not in the, they don't have enough of this resource. They're trying to do whatever. The coup de grace goes completely wide. Wait, Uzma's too deep. Doesn't hit that much, but somebody's taking down. Uzma goes down here as well. Oh, that's not good. Beak's trying to do whatever he can. Five seconds until he's going to get taken Me? out. Lily Petal, Me? did you take it? One more auto attack. <laughs> he gets Okay, okay, a couple additional kills coming in for him. He's gonna unfortunately pop here for himself. It is gonna be a head pop, unfortunately, for him. He's most likely gonna get kill secured by Lily Petal, but a last hurrah for Meek Speedy. Maybe that is enough to place him in second place. Maybe that's enough for Team uh, Riz to end up in that second place spot that they have been gunning for for such a long time. An unfortunate end there that they can't finish first, but a good run from Meek to end all the games here today. Haya Papaya versus No Flame. Oh it's my God. time, Shuvi. I'm here for it. Let's see. I believe they're going to start moving already, of course. Only 10 seconds left for Superior. They will get a few extra seconds, of course. But, oh, no. The traps are coming down. Who's going to be able to take it, Shuvi? Here we go. Our Yo. final fight is just about to start. 
It is brewing, Circadia. Look at these guys. They're all prepping up. Double guillotines and claymores down on the ground. The EMP drone is going to be perfect. Aenon tries to get away here. Acceptance speech is down on the ground. The surf's up is not that great. Aenon actually chunks the entirety of the two of the coup de gras there by themselves. But the look at the health bars oh. on the side of this team. It is getting absolutely demolished. It's actually Aenon that can take it out here first. But the AoE damage from Frankie uh, Duno and Superior. One. No flame rises from the ashes. No flame, my butt. The Phoenix rises again. These teams have been it. Season 8 is over. Ladies and gentlemen, no flame will be the final victors of game number 5 and the final victors of season 8. An incredible season for these guys and they will wow. take away everything in the end. What an incredible series we had here today. Insanity here on Lumia Island for us, Shuvi. That was crazy congratulations we already know who came in first congratulations to no flame on a dominant victory over these five games here today just wow nobody can put them down even they were almost dead in beach and it didn't matter able to get the resurrections off that they needed and they came back baby wow Oh my god. There's not much to say about that, is there, Shuvi? It's look at the look on your face. I can see it. It's what do you what do you even say about that? They went hard. They went crazy. Wow. I can all I can remember all I can imagine in my head is that one gif where this guy's like sitting inside of a beach saying like never give up. <laughs> never give up. That is basically the story. That was set for Team No Flame. They had their ups and downs in game number five. Started with an incredible roller coaster ride all the way up to the peak and then just went straight down in beach. Wow. With hopes and dreams of having that much timer simply due to how many kills they had allowed them to get back into it. And it, as I said, the Phoenix rises again. No flame, my butt. They have all the flames in the world. They control all yep. the damage and all the flame in their hands, too. An amazing yep. season competed by them an amazing set of games that we saw from those guys and again congratulations yeah fantastic job to them it was a beautiful ending to our games today juvie let's take a look at our final scoreboard of today of course of course coming out first place team no flame 264 points, Shuvi. Followed up in second place by Riz with 170. Third place, Haya Papaya with 157. Fourth place, Oozing E Girls Meow with 117. Iku Yo Please in fifth with <laughs> just about 86 points. And then in sixth place is Gaposaurus with 85. Congratulations once again to No Flame for a great victory there. But thank you to all of our competitors today for coming out and playing. And thank you for a fun and memorable season of the Lumia Marathon here for North America. What a time, Shuvi. What a time to be alive for us. My expectations are met, man. I am satisfied with the results of today. But yeah. for you and me, man. We still have more that is happening this weekend, so... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, we still have the European Lumia Marathon finals tomorrow at, I believe, noon Eastern. I was going to say 1 o'clock, but of course, we have daylight savings time. Don't forget to change your clocks That's or true. change your clocks forward tonight, guys. My apologies. Uh, and of course, if you guys want to catch us again, we will be live at 5 in the morning, still here on this channel, once again, for the ERM finals as well today. ERM number 13 finals. Next weekend will be the South American Lumia Marathon finals. And then the weekend after that will be the ERM season finals. Me and Shuvi will be here again and again and again and Any again. Word actual, like, no flame phoenix rising yeah, from the ashes. Exactly. And then... <laughs> no, we, we've risen too many times. I think we're a crisp at this point if we're the, if yeah. we're the phoenix. But every single guys, time I drags us out of yeah. the basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Drags us. laughs> 
<laughs> drags us out always to come and cast for you guys. But we hope you really did enjoy t- uh, today's show. It was fantastic from everybody. Thank you to our lovely scorekeepers observation. And well, that's actually it. There's only a few of us here today, but uh, you know, <laughs> there's only four of us. Um, but yeah, big thank you to you two out there. I know you both can hear me. Um, but thank you to everybody out there in chat as well for coming and watching this and supporting your favorite teams, whether it be No Flame, Riz, Gapasaurus, and the rest of them. Thank you for supporting everybody, for supporting North America and supporting Eternal Return in general. Juvie, any final words from you as well? You're ranked. (laughs) (laughs) Well, guys, I believe that is it here from us today. But until next time, we will see you guys here on Lumi Island once again. Take it easy, everybody. See ya. Yeah. <laughs>